And good evening, my lovely Lost Tales, and welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite for my Friday Night Spice stream. As we sink our teeth, our claws, our weird wings with the little hooky bits on the top into Monster Road Trip. It literally came out like an hour ago. <laughs> Like an hour and a half ago or something and I was like starting to sweat bullets like wait is it gonna come out in time I, I, I didn't I know it's coming out today but is it gonna come out in time but thankfully it did come out in time and now we're all here and now we're having a good time so thank you all so much for joining me tonight uh, before we get the ball rolling tonight we have some amazing resubs oh my god we already have a hype train going <laughs> You guys, thank you so much. Okay, Salva Holder, thank you so much for the 16 month resub. Back the respite for the spice and chills. The weekend is secured. Thank you so much, Salva Holder. Samuel, thank you so much for the 27 month resub. Happy sub anniversary to the most wonderful streamer, most talented voice actress, most fantastic writer who makes heart sore with wonder and heavy with love, the most gorgeous Fae, the most beautiful Seraphim, and actual goddess herself. You. What, we're like, just over like 12 minutes into the stream and already like you're hitting me right in the feels. <laughs> Samuel, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. And Carmina, it's actually Carmina. Thank you so much for the 25 month resub over two years now. Good evening, Steph. Hope you've been having a wonderful spooks month. I most definitely am between the Silent Hill showcase and the Resident Evil showcase and this month just being a bounty of good games coming out. I am a very, very happy bean. My day job has been okay this month. So there's just been good things happening in just gaming and good life things in general. And it, it's the spooky month. It's my favorite month. It's a spooky month. So I hope you've all been having a good time this month as well. And Varden's Odyssey, thank you so much for the 19 month resub. A much needed break after this week. Can't wait. Well, perfect timing. I hope you all settle down, you've got yourselves a drink, because we need to stay hydrated on this road trip because things are probably going to get a little spicy. Um, but thank you all so much for the amazing resubs. We're already at a level 2 hype train, holy shit. But thank you so much everyone for your amazing resubs and support. I really appreciate it. And a stretch check from Hayden to start things off. Ah, mm, that was my neck. It's fine, I do yoga like three times a week, it's fine. If anything, that's a kind of a good thing, because my joints click so much, because it means I'm, I'm keeping my body moving. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I'm in a weird mood tonight, but a, kind of, but a good mood. I think it's like the good kind of vibes that we need for this game. So, Monster Road Trip is a little, dif is a little different from the previous games. It's more of a kind of choose your own adventure like a board game sort of thing um rather than focusing on interactions with a specific goal character in mind if that makes sense honestly i'm just gonna play it as best i can and just have fun for the next couple of hours <laughs> and try and fail but try to voice act as many as many characters as i can okay okay mods are we standing by with the water cannons I've got a very full water bottle tonight and a very full glass of whiskey. So, we should be good to go. Alright. So, I have- the only thing I've tweaked on my end is I have turned on the uh, streamer mode. So, the- like, because the, there's music in this game, so it changes it to, um, like, music that you can put on streams without getting your channel like shut down or demonetize or whatever so settle in relax and enjoy monster road trip i hope everyone's packed their snacks got some tunes and got their ne necronomicon so fuck yes um okay this is actually really cute um you know what this first round, because I want to experience it with all the talented voice actors, because there's some wonderfully talented voice actors in this game. I know I want to experience it with the voices. Yes, please. Let's go. And then maybe, because I imagine we'll probably do two rounds of this, um, because when I've been playing Monster Prom and Monster uh, Camp, it's usually like two rounds is about like what I do for my stream. So 
Jen's branch the water tanks and I have a water bomber circling the respite so we should be good. I'm gonna need some monkey shoulder tonight. Shame I don't have any. Talon, get something nice for yourself like a lemonade with some gin. Find some vodka in the back of the freezer. I don't know. Like it's Friday night. You deserve to be nice to yourself, okay? Hey Dodge, how's it going? Oh god, I could go for some pizza right now. Fuck. Alrighty, let's get going, shall we? Okay, what's your road trip style? Uh, first time playing this game, so road tripper, the true survival co-op experience, including a player performance ranking at the end. Okay, I'll probably fuck it up, but I'll try my best. Uh, what's your road trip style? Easy, focus on narrative and take the scenic routes. High initial resources, keep conversations are impossible to fail. Your standard road trip experience, standard initial response, uh, resources, extra attempt at deep conversations. Oh guys, thank you so much for the hype train. Oh, we got it to level two, it's amazing. Thank you so much guys. Thank you. Alrighty, uh, doo -doo -doo. you know what? Let's just, let's just ease into it tonight. Let's, before we sink our teeth into a bit more of a challenge, like, let's just go easy mode. Just to figure things out until we get into the flow of this game, and then we'll up the challenge a bit, okay? So I want to focus on the story. Ah, the road. That mythical beast of asphalt. Hang on, I think I... Can I use my controller in this? It'll make it easier, more comfortable. Can I? Go on. There we are. Sorry, I didn't read that bit. Fuck. Back then, when we were young and unafraid. Summer was coming to an end when Polly and Scott planned a road trip. The whole thing was bound to go off rails. This was the prank masters after all. Scott Hal, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. He is a himbo perfection and we love Scott. And Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Each of them were by themselves an agent of chaos. But together, together they were the perfect combo for hijinks to ensue. Who in their right mind would have agreed to join them on such a trip? Okay, so we do get some set characters, um, but then if you buy the DLC, then you get extra characters as well. So we have these four beautiful babes to choose from. We have blue, green, red, and yellow. Honestly, all of them are out of perfection. Um, the lower four are the ones that you can buy with the DLC. I haven't bought any yet, just because I wanted to like play this game, figure it out if I really, really liked it first. So yeah, um, feel free to check this game out for yourselves, because there are some very, very cute options. But I was going to go with round one. Uh, for, uh, blue with round one. Hell yes. Okay, who are you really? Okay. I'm going to go by my name. Can I do my full name? Please, can I do my full name? I need at least eight char nine characters for my full name. Yay! Okay, my pronouns are she. Perfect. I'm dead, but full of life. Blue is a spinning image of you. I think I'm kind of a, maybe a mix between like blue and red a little bit. Like, I'm barely seen when I'm like walking around outside of my apartment without my leather jacket. So I have a feeling I'm kind of in the middle between blue and red. I'm purple or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I love all their new designs or kind of like their upgraded designs for this game. Tune your trip vibes. Okay, desert vibes, tropical rave, lo-fi beats, or surf rock. Surf rock is kind of giving me monster camp vibes. Lo-fi beats are nice. I kind of am feeling tropical rave at the moment. Alright, let's go with tropical rave. Actually, let's go in order from left to right. I want to try desert vibes first, just to see if it has like customization stuff or it changes what the game's like. Was the road trip a dangerous idea? Yes. Was it poorly planned? Yes. Did we do it anyway? Fuck yes. For in the end, we were young and unafraid. We were ready to start. <laughs> they do that for each game and I love it. I got a good feeling about this. Hell yeah, okay. So, 
The main gist is- fuck. Uh, one second. I should have done this before. I... One second, guys. Um, hmm. That's not what I meant to do. One second. There we go, you can kind of see it a little bit better. There we go. So yeah, you can see the stats up there. I'm just now realizing that was fucking pointless because uh, I have the spider webs in the way, but screw it, we're doing we're keeping it like this for now. Um <laughs> Jesse, how's it going? We're literally just getting started tonight, but welcome, Jesse! Oh my god, Jesse Cox, thank you so much for dropping by. Like I am as you as you know, like I'm a massive fan of this series, so welcome, welcome. Hang on. Oh, feel free to just like chill out. Feel free to stay as long as you like. We're just starting out tonight. We're in for a good time. We're in for a good time. <laughs> um, no, Jesse, I'm trying out the game like vanilla game first, and then I might unlock some of the DLC later on. See how I go. But I am intrigued by Autumn Vibes Moth Girl. I'm just saying, like, thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> ah, but we're literally just getting started tonight, so we're all having a good time so far. Feel free to chill out with us for a bit. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, National Park or Animal Sanctuary? I'm personally more drawn to the National Park, so let's go over there. Go hug a tree, nature nerd. Ah, the great outdoors. National Parks outdoors. Did you get this on Steam? Yes, I did. Yes, indeed I did. Preserving nature is important, and no one does it better than national parks. Here you can relax, breathe that clean mountain air, and truly appreciate the great outdoors. The hiking dead. Or you can fuck around and be chaotic. Yeah, that's way more likely. Oh, really? Jesse, are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, okay. Um, just to check, do you want me to say what it is that you just whispered to me? Because like, I'm happy to just keep that, like... <laughs> okay. Hang on. Uh, in any event, what are you going to do at the park? Polly, I have a question. Oh yeah, uh, definitely not like share what you like the codes or anything. But can I say what you said? Okay, um, Jesse is officially like amazing and the best person ever. They just sent me like um, they were just whispered, whispered to me uh, the codes for to download the DLCs for free. So thank you so much. <laughs> like I'm sorry, I'm trying not to fangirl too much, but I love these series of games so much. So. Thank you so much, Jesse. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, abs you are absolutely officially the best. And Chuck, we please get a ton of love for Jesse Cox. Also, if you haven't checked out his streams yet, go do that when he's live next. They're so fucking good. Please, 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 please. He and the whole team behind like the Monster Prom, Monster Camp, Monster Road Trip series are fucking amazing. So good. <laughs> You are a wonderful, wonderful being, Jesse, and you are welcome um, on my Twitch channel anytime at all. But let us proceed, shall we? <laughs> Polly, I've been meaning to ask you, how, how do you road trip? It's okay, Scott. There's no shame in asking, Scott. Let me explain. All of us will share six essential resources, and we need to manage them wisely to keep this trip afloat. So we need to be careful, because the choices we make during the trip can affect the resources. And if one of them depletes completely, we can kiss the road trip goodbye. I get it, so our goal is to avoid running out of any resource and keep road tripping forever? No, no, the goal is to reach to one of the six destinations every road trip leads to. I have this travel guide that explains how each destination requires us to hoard a different resource. You can check said guide whenever you want. Click on the destination tab to the right or press E on the keyboard or left button, uh, bumper on the controller. 
There you'll find the requirements to reach a destination and win the game. Enough exposition, narrated voice inside our heads. Yeah. We get it, keep up resources far above zero and hoard enough of one resource to reach the destination. Let's go. Alrighty, um... Okay, I'm just gonna go with my gut, just let the cards fall wherever they feel like it. Uh, come on guys, it's me. You know I'm running into the woods looking for cryptids, so hell yeah. Sometimes you go looking for the cryptid, sometimes the cryptid finds you. I swear if we get Mothman on the first game, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. <laughs> At least that's what happens when you, Polly, and Scott enter the woods and run into Mossmorn, your favorite moth person from summer camp! Yes! Oh my god, 10 out of 10 game of the year. Yes. First fucking try. I find Mothman. I... Yes. Hi. I missed you. You still single? Um... <laughs> Hello, friends. Are you enjoying the national park? I was just chatting with some of the park rangers. You wouldn't believe who Officer Riley's sweet wife is sleeping with this week. Hey, Boo. Hey, Moss. You're still a weepy, gossipy bitch, I see. Always. But lately, I've been pursuing other hobbies, such as enjoying the beauty of nature and training to fly into the sun. I definitely don't recommend you do that last thing, unless you want to die. <laughs> I am more than willing to perish for my passions. A moth after my own heart. Awesome, bro! Sounds cool, bro. We were just on the hunt for some cryptids. You know where we could find any? Hmm. Besides my glorious self, yes, this park is full of my fellow cryptids. I could introduce you to one. I need to catch up with them anyway. We cryptids make great friends, but boy are we hard to keep in touch with. But I got a hot date with a hot campfire this evening, so we only have time to visit one cryptid. Stephanie, who would you prefer to meet? Oh my god. Meet the fresco nightcrawler, he's always happy to teach friends the beautiful game of soccer. <laughs> or have some tea and pastries with at Sasquatch's secluded cabin where he hides from the paparazzi. I'm kind of getting some lumberjack vibes from Sasquatch, so let's go with you. Sounds fun. Sasquatch lives in a secluded cabin deep in the woods. We'll have to fly there to save time. Moss scoops you all up and flies into the sky. After a very intense debate convincing him not to fly you into the sun together, you touch down at Sasquatch's cabin. The legend himself is sitting on the rocking chair on the front porch, knitting the biggest pair of socks you've ever seen. <laughs> hey, Squash. Long time no see. I brought some friends to visit you. I hope that was okay. Hey, Moss. I don't mind. I'm just sorry I didn't clean up more. Forgive all these hair clumps. It's shen season. <laughs> Relatable, bro. It's so cool to meet you in person. Do you know how many internet forums there are for people just hoping to meet you once? Oh, uh, yes. I'm well aware of my stalkers. They're the reason I retreated into the woods in the first place. Being constantly hunted is irritating, especially by paparazzis. Those insidious parasites follow me everywhere. They have bright, flashing, soulless lights for eyes, and they always make the hor those most horrible shutter-clicking cry. Hmm. Squash, I told you, there's no such thing as paparazzis. That's just a myth. They're real, and I've seen them. They stalk in the night, crawling out of their strange dimension to hunt me down. Uh-oh. That sounds terrible. How do you deal with it? David, uh, kind of. Um... In the other games, Monster Prom and Monster Camp, they were much more kind of focusing more on like the relationship side of things. This game's more about going on a fun, flirtatious adventure with your friends, and maybe you find some romance along the way, but it's it's mostly more of a road trip sort of game, more like a board game sort of vibe. But there's a lot of steam and a lot of spice and a lot of shenanigans in this game, so feel free to chill with us as we play it together. I remain in seclusion. It's not bad. Being unplugged from society has given me time to perfect my possum cookie recipe. Wanna try some? Sure. You lose two mind listening to Sasquatch's paranoid paparazzi rants, but you gain two stamina eating delicious possum pa pasties. Sweet! Alrighty, what are our options? Uh, troll gas station or biker bar? Hmm. 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 
Can't believe I know what the fresco nightcrawler is. I know it's amazing. Oh, sweet! How's it going? How's it going? Hmm. And yes, let's go with Biker Bar. Oh, I got dirt in my shoes. This is why I prefer floating. Please have hot monsters in leather. Please have hot monsters in leather. Breaking bottles, clinking shot glasses, revving motors, the crash of a window some dude just got thrown out of. This next round's on me! Okay, now she looks more like how I dress. Such are the dulcet melodies of a bona fide biker bar. This is your chance to embrace your inner badass. What do you do? <laughs> Woohoo, again, let's choose an action and make an event happen. Oh. Yes, I'm ready for all the randomness these events involve. Actually, Polly, I was checking this travel guide and it saves they aren't so random after all. Look, these different signs apparently refer to different types of events. The most common type of events is called exchange events. After making a choice in those, you always lose a resource and gain a resource no matter what. The trick is making the right choice, since that'll decide which resources are gained and lost. If there's, but if there's a resource sign next to an event type sign, that's called a known resource. It means that resource is guaranteed to be affected no matter what our choice is. If the sign is positive, then the resource is guaranteed to be gained. If it's negative, then you know you'll lose it. Like for example, if we see an action with this sign, we know we'll lose money here. Our choice will only determine which resource we'll gain. That's not so bad. If we know losing or gaining as resources is unavoidable, we could be strategic about it. This all sounds very useful, but also like too much pressure for fan favorite Polly to keep track of. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, can we leave these decisions to you? Thanks! No worries, Polly, I got this. Alright, uh... So we already have like a little bit of like on the stamina side of things. What do we have in terms of like a lot of resources that we can... Hang on, let me just check something. Okay, Hype is the one with like the star eyes. Hmm. You know what, let's play some pool. We head over to the pool table to start a game, but find two legendary idiots already in the middle of a game when you get there. Hey. Alright, I'll sink in the six in the top left corner pocket, which will knock the seven into the eight ball and ricochet them both into opposite pockets. I fucking love this game, you guys. Not if I block your amazing trick shot with my even more amazing counter move, four. Four. <laughs> Suzanne hits the cue ball. Whiskey swings his cue. St his name is Whiskey. Whiskey the unicorn. Yes, this game. Whiskey swings his cue stick it like a baseball bat at the cue ball. The ball ricochets off the ceiling and shatters the eight ball to smithereens. Damn it! You win another round of death balls, my friend. Here's your twenty dollars. I'll go pay for the property damages too. <laughs> death balls, huh? Can't wait to turn this one into a story of how I died. What are you saying? You think you can withstand the almighty power that is death balls? <laughs> Listen, I am the greatest death balls player in the whole in the whole bar. No one has ever defeated me, and no one ever will. Oh my god. I'm a fucking moron. Why didn't I realize it? It, um... He's based off of, um... I can't remember the name of the game, but it was that Flash game where you were a unicorn and you were jumping over hurdles, and it was, like, on the Adult Swim website. That song will not leave my head. I'm not gonna sing it, just in case copyright, but you know the one I'm talking about if you grew up in the 2000s. Like, Cyborg Unicorn Attack or something. Yes! I think that was it. Robot Unicorn Attack. That was it. I think he's inspired by that. I could be wrong. It's just cool, though. <laughs> uh, all the rantings is getting you intrigued. You politely ask Whiskey how exactly Death Balls is played. You dare challenge me to Death Balls at my own table? No. Nani? Did someone say we have new Death Balls challenger? Yep. Stephanie over here thinks she's got some big brass hay balls between her legs. I accept your challenge, weakling. 
You challenge no one, nor do you know how this game is even played, but this is your life now, you guess? Uh, how will you beat an all-time Death Balls champion? Bend physics with the time, space, divine curve shot, or the sad reality is you will never be better than whiskey. You must resort to the oldest deus ex machina in the book. The power of love. You know what, we're gonna gain money, like, we know for sh sure that's what we're gonna get. Um... I wanna see what happens when we reach in and find the power of love. Don't make me start singing the song. I will sing the song, you guys. You play your best and have faith in the power of love. To no one's surprise, whiskey destroys you. Sad trumpet noise. You peer down at the eight ball in the pocket with tears in your, tears in your eyes. But how could it be? The eight ball looks up at you with loving, beachy eyes. <gasps> oh my fucking god. This game. <sighs> Fuck it, it's my Friday stream. I can do what I want. I'm sorry, Stephanie Senpai. I fought so hard. I wanted you to win, but still, I failed you. No, it's not your fault. I thought of nothing but taking down my opponent. It's my fault you suffered so much, a eh, Falcon. <laughs> Remember me as I was, Senpai, and just know that I. I. Hello? A Balkun dies before she could finish. You didn't even get to tell her you love her too. Tears pour down your face. <laughs> oh well. Can anyone explain why Stephanie is hysterically sobbing over the eight ball? Oh, shh. Don't even talk over the emotional climax. The tears keep falling and falling until you hear A Balkun gasp for air again. I'm alive? Senpai, the power of your love brought me back to life. I think I can still win this. Put me back on that board. You put the eight ball cone back on the board, uh, line up your shot, and manage to sink her in the pocket. You win! How the fuck does that count as a win? I still sank the eight ball first. Because of the power of love, dum dum. Everyone knows love trumps all other logic in an epic battle. Yeah, I'm checking the rules, and the power of love apparently is the ultimate trump move. It's 71. Whiskey payer two money, you bet. Hooray! Who cares that you lost too hype due to how cheap Deus Ex Machinas are? You even start a passionate long distance relationship with Aborkun. Why turn on the driver's seat? Mm. It will. Okay. Uh, Charming Village. Oh no! I can't choose. Fortune Teller or Charming Village? Definitely not Midsummer inspired. I kind of want to go to the Charming Village. Because you you know me, I love an H, uh, A24 horror movie, especially Midsummer. Sorry. Okay. I will go with the Fortune Teller. Like, even though I'm playing this as a solo game, I am reading what you guys suggest in chat, so we'll go with the Fortune Teller. I foresee this location in your future. Isn't it cool how nothing ever happens on the road? What? Why is the car stopped? Whoa, I'm getting dizzy watching our resources go up and down. Man, yeah man, is it even possible to know what we're losing or gaining beforehand? Dang, we're doomed. Put something on the radio. We may fuck up this road trip, but at least we'll fuck it up for a, a while having some fun. Okay. Welcome to our humble radio show, where our ghosts give narratively convenient road trip trips. Today we have road trip survivors Cormac S. Uh, Cormac S. Thompson with Hunter McCarthy. Guys, what can you share with our audience? Let me start by saying this is the number one cause of road trip related deaths and if not probably understanding how to manage resources. I uh, that's the dreaded six. Most unexperienced road trippers think they behave in arbitrary ways, but that's simply not true. When you're making choices on the road, you have to look for little cues that infer what resource you'll be losing or gaining. Money might be the easiest one. Are you buying or renting something? Money down? Hiring someone? Money? Uh, hiring someone? Money down? Doing a job or selling something? Money up! But beware, sometimes the solution doesn't obviously involve buying something, but involves using the expensive stuff you may need to rent or buy. And what about magic? The mysterious substance that fuels our cars. 
Magic is tricky because sometimes you'll uh, need to use it for spells, summonings, and curses. But that means lowering your magic and risking an empty fuel tank. And getting magic up can be quite hard. You can find a gas station, or you may need to resort to performing sacrifices or colluding with strange powerful entities. You know, classic road trip stuff. Our time is up, fellas. Let's discuss the other resources in future episodes of everyone's favorite radio show, Convenient Exposition. Whoa, well, that was stupidly convenient. Scott, did you take notes? Nope. Well, I hope Stephanie did, at least. Otherwise, we're truly fucked, and not in a good way. Oh, that went in one ear and out the other. I'm just trying my best with this game. <laughs> is fortune telling real, or is it all bogus? Only one way to find out. Uh, shiny ball? The psychic who runs the caravan has a sign posted outside with the different services she offers. There are so many different ways to glimpse the future. What do you want to do? Okay. Um. Hmm. Like, we could go more towards the one that has uh, money. Because we've already got, like, a good couple of points in that and stamina. So why don't we kind of maybe go for that particular goal? Oh, it's all good, Frosty King. Thank you so much for dropping by. I was hoping it'd be Magic Cat. Oh, Magic Cat. Uh, Juan, the Magic Cat. He's actually one of the characters that you can uh, play as a player character if you get the DLC, which the amazing Jesse Cox sent my way. So I'm very excited for that. So let's do some palm reading. I would normally go for like more. Hang on. What's that symbol again? Okay, that means my soul thing would go down a bit. But you know what? Let's keep things adventurous. I want to do the tarot reading, because I actually do tarot readings and I'm pretty good at them. So, let's go with that. Well, you've always liked birthday cards and playing cards. Why not try your luck with fortune telling cards, too? Okay, what voice should I give you? Mm -hmm. She's going to go Wednesday Adam vibes. Hang on. Welcome to Hope's Harlow's Tent of the Great Beyond. If you want your cards read, take a seat and shuffle the tarot deck. Stephanie will start with you. We'll do a three card spread for the card to represent your past, present, and future. Your past card is The Hanged Man. It's a card depicting a tragic fool. It represents your journey so far, a series of misadventures where you tend to make the wrong choices. Yikes, but Tragic Fool could totally be your middle name, to be fair. Your present card is The Justice. This card represents an unusually high and enterprising libido and a colorful sex life. Nice! Nice! Clock them cheeks, Steph! You didn't let me finish. It represents that in the upright position, but it was drawn upside down, which inverts its meaning. It means Stephanie doesn't fuck. Like, at all. I came to uh, play this game to have fun, uh, not to get called out, okay? Fuck you. <laughs> well, sheesh, it's not your fault you haven't gotten any ass lately. You aren't playing a dating sim this time. <laughs> I hope Sotara cards are kind of reading you to fill. Why don't you try making your own destiny? Oh. <laughs> no bitches! <laughs> I didn't come here for both the game and my chat to drag me, okay? I'm the fucking streamer here, I make the rules! <laughs> no! Okay, it's fine, it's fine. I have some better cards in my pockets. Don't ask. Swap out the future card with one of these. It seems to rig Hope's tarot reading, but hey, if she's really is really psychic, then she should have seen the switchery coming. Pick a card, any card. Okay, the random dude with very cool sunglasses, the legendary blue eyes white dragon card in mint condition, or the plus four tarot card, you get four more cards, essentially altering your future. I grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh. I love blue eyes white dragon so much, so. And it's in mint condition too, fuck yeah! For your future we have the legendary blue eyes white dragon card in mint condition. These cards are quite rare. They were used by ancient kings and their court magicians to bring wealth and prosperity to their kingdoms for centuries. I think the kings also use these cards to battle each other in the shadow games or something. I don't know, that's trading too far into territory for me. 
Anyway, here's money in your future. Stephanie, plus two money to be precise. I'd like to buy that card from you. Uh, what are you talking about? This is your card? Oh, why would you... Cut the ball. I know Stephanie planted the card to read the reading. Which is rude, by the way. But seriously, don't pick on the streamer. That's Scarlet's job. Yeah, side note, where the fuck is Scarlet and why isn't she cackling loudly at me? <laughs> no, is Sedekaiba gonna buy slash jewel from you? No, the second that he hears a whiff that there's a blue eyes white dragon in mint condition, we're just gonna be driving, having a grand old time, and his limo's just gonna come out of fucking nowhere and just like crash into us. He'll just like throw a couple hundred dollar bills on us and then find the card in the wreckage and then drive off. Because I'm here cackling at you. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Welcome back. Fuck you. <laughs> but you can make it up to me by selling me the dumb card. Fine, that's fair. Hope takes your card reverently in her hands and rips it in half. You monster. No way. Holy shit. Holy shit. <gasps> Not the legendary blue eyes white dragon. Yeah, I destroyed it. It was too dangerous to even exist. Entire empires have fallen due to this incredibly nerdy power this wicked card wields. Never fear, Leon is here. Hee <laughs> hee. Wait, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Me? I just like to join when people scrim scrims dramatically. It's fun. Ah, okay. Still not cool, Hope. Well, that power was fun while it lasted, you suppose. You still lose two soul for rigging that reading. Fair enough. Alrighty. Fancy motel? Or a convention? Mike! What do I pick? The fancy hotel or the con? Hmm. You know what? Screw it. I'm not happy with where my um, uh, webcam's currently sitting. One second. Putting it back. There we go. There we go, that's better. Because the spider words were covering it up anyway. Um, hmm. Let's go to the con, shall we? Wind in my face makes me feel so alive. Yeah, you're con. It's the perfect place for you, uh, to be your authentic, nerdy self without fear of judgment. Hey, look there are cosplayers, there. merch vendors, panels, gaming tournaments, overpriced food. Don't get me started on the overpriced food, but I love cons so much, and I'm so glad I get to now go to more of them. So much to do, so little time. What activity do you want to try out? Uh, attend a fandom meeting, walk the floor, or join a gaming tournament. I tend to not really go to the panels so much unless a friend is involved in it. Hang on. Hmm. And I'm not really like super into like doing the gaming tournaments. Let's just walk the floor and see what happens. I'm probably gonna lose money, but uh, because we see something shiny. But let's just walk the floor, shall we? We start walking around the main floor. The dozens of booths and cosplayers and loud J-pop are a bit overwhelming until you see a friendly face. Who is it? <laughs> Do you like my cosplay? Hey, how's it going, Zoe? Oh, you look so cute. I love your like Garfield onesie. Oh my god, is that a is that a lasagna body pillow? No way. Okay, this full cosplay, Z like Zoe in the Garfield onesie with the lasagna body pillow. I could legit see someone cosplaying that at a con next year. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Hey guys, uh, what a pleasant surprise to see you three at a con. Do you like my cosplay? I love it. <laughs> I'm living for it, Zoe. Metaphorically, of course. Wanna walk the floor with us? You know more about this scene than we do. Steph, please cosplay this. Uh, Mike, can you take a, sh a photo of this and send it to me? Because by the end of the stream, I'm usually kind of tired and I might forget. Take a photo of this, of Zoe as this, and send it to me right now, if, if you have your phone on you, as a reminder that I need to cosplay this now. I can't promise it, because I haven't done like a full face paint or anything like that for a cosplay or something before, but I will consider it. I will definitely consider it. Good idea. The merch floor can be a bit intimidating and the labyrinthine for newcomers. Just stick with me and we'll make it through. 
Zoe leads you like a safari guide through the con jungle, pointing out interesting sights along the way. <laughs> if you look to your left, you'll see a, pink, a little boy cosplaying Ash and Kenneth from the Pokemon's anime, accompanied by a father who looks desperate to go home. Behind them is a fully grown man who's also cosplaying Ash and Kenneth, here with his teenage daughter who looks desperate to go home. <laughs> Ooh, is that a ball pit? I love balls, mostly in sports, but also in general. Let's check it out. No, Scott, we do not to talk about the con sand ball pit. It's a relic to remind us of the dark ages of cons. I... I... Because I was actively on Tumblr during DashCon and that whole fiasco. I got to watch that meltdown in real time. And then the aftermath of it, where people would dress up and cosplay as the ball pit. It's like... Next level... Dadaism in action, and it's amazing. It's so good. <laughs> oh, what's that long line for? Is it to get an autograph from a famous person? A huge panel, maybe? That's the line for the bathrooms, actually. If you really need to go, you can always pee in the ball pit. <laughs> Someone actually did that at Dashcon, apparently. <laughs> yeah, get your super sparkle magical girl inflation art here and hee <laughs> cries a vendor in Artist Alley. We've got BOGO deals and pumpkin fucking art. Ooh, well. Hey, shouts the security guard. You already exceeded the cons. Nya limit, missy. One more cat noise. Ooh, ooh, or glomp out of you and you're kicked out. <gasps> Please tell me they're selling yaoi paddles. <laughs> Please. Can someone show up with a yaoi paddle? I will scream. Oh, man. People are already exceeding their nya limits. This con must be almost over. Wait, the meme of the ball pit that's just an empty room? No, they would dress up as like the ball pit and they would have like a hoop skirt with like strings attached. So they would have like the ball pit around them with like actual like the plastic balls in them and they'd be dressed in like a blue dress. And they'd have like um, the tumbler icon either on their forehead or on their back or something off the dress or on the front of the dress and it was amazing. Like if you, I think if you search Dashcon ball pit cosplay you'll see a photo a couple of photos of it i think it was only maybe a handful of people who did it but still it's great <laughs> we probably have time to see at least one more thing stephanie what do you want to check out make it count all right the stand full of very saucy dragon heat zines a smart investment who knows a horny one nonetheless free hugs not so much but they're free no never go up to the free hug people like i'm i'm sure at least a couple of them mean well but so it's either go to the kind of creepy free hugs person or go to the um, the vendor that you need to show your ID to in order to get in. Yeah, I've been to that section of cons. They're great. Mm. Okay. A stand full of very saucy dragon heat zines. A smart investment, who knows? A horny one nonetheless. Ooh, kinky. Oh, Dragon Heat is the horny gift of fanfic that just keeps on giving. Hey. Polly reads me the latest update of Dragon Heat every time a chapter gets added to AO4. It's really fun. Be still, my shipping heart. You two read erotic fanfic together? Be still, my shipping heart. It's not like that, Boo. Scott just needs someone there to explain what... Scott needs someone there to explain what defenestration is and how it applies to a kinky content context. <laughs> Every chapter I learn something new and sexy. He's such a himbo, I love him. You all check out the Dragon Heat scene stand. The racy cover art alone would be enough to give a nun a heart attack. Nice. Wow, they've got fan art of chapter 117 when Morgana Le breast it. Uh, breast strike? Discovers that the real power of the cock ring of truth was inside her all along. <laughs> Literally, because it turned out Harold McDonghard fucked her so aggressively in chapter 110 that the cock ring got stuck in her gooch. God, I love literature. <laughs> Whoa, look at the, this print of Lady Minerva Dong Dong sitting on Harold McDonghard's face. I didn't know there was a species of monster that had so many butt cheeks. I love this game. Oh my god, I need this figurine of Vanette. Venesaria and Evil Queen Rosequeef dueling with a dual ended sex sex caliber dildo. Anyone have five grand I can borrow? Okay, that last line, anyone have five grand I can borrow, that is a big fucking mood when you go to cons. 
You spot Zoe some cash and buy yourself a pop-up art scene covering the first 69 chapters of Dragon Heat. Dragon porn has never been so 3D. You lose two money on your horny purchases, but buying anything that makes you sploosh is bound to give you plus two hype. It's all about balance in this game. It's about giving, taking, and taking a little bit more. Oh, finally a place to rest. Even the spectral booty needs to do some sitting after so much shaking. The guide here says there's several rest stops like this one. We should be able to reach one, like once a week after visiting four locations or so. Let's go, Scott! That sounds good. Let's go chill on this bench, Scott. As your friends leave, you realize you don't want to rest because you're utterly addicted to making choices all the time. And this rest stop is no different. No. Yeah. I oh, know my hand was like, I oh, know, got a little bit of whiskey residue on it. I didn't want my controller to get sticky. He quickly assess the many, well, five things you can check out around here. But beware, with the exception of the car, each choice can only accommodate one player. It's first come, first serve. Now go and see what different spots do. Alright, so. Uh, what's here? Time to snack, time to slack. Welcome to the benches where you can relax and talk with either Polly or Scott. And yes, I'm enjoying some more smoke here tonight, and it is wonderful. I had a feeling like tonight was a whiskey sort of night, and it just sets the vibe perfectly. Thank you for the stretch check, Sam, and the hydrate check. Mm. I'm surprised I haven't had more of those this evening so far. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good, because it's just pacing ourselves with the spice. The conversations you can hold with them are, made, uh, are a chill narrative treat with no choices to be made. If you have enough conversations, you might score a date ending with one of them. Also, by having a conversation with Polly or Scott, you'll activate the chaotic energy passive effect, which will remain active for the following week. What does it do exactly? Find out for yourself. Now go and make some small talk. You know what? I love both of them. Scott's much more my vibe, though. Like, Polly's great, but I, I'm not really a party sort of person. Um, so, Scott... I, I appreciate a good himbo. I appreciate a, a tall, adorable himbo who likes headpads. Talk about his big, beautiful muscles or his sports team. Oh, sorry, just seeing the two of them together, they are precious beans and I love them. Um, let's start out things nice. Let's talk about his sports team because he can t keep talking about them for hours. Go team! I love my team. Life is so much easier when you know you've got a group of bros that always have your back. I think it's nice because we all grow uh, together through constant teamwork. <laughs> and when te we teamwork too much and get exhausted, we can also team leisure. Team leisure? Yeah, you know, doing all the fun things you can do together as a team out of the field. <laughs> that sounds funny. For a moment, I thought it was a code for sex. Hey. Oh, there's also sex sometimes, sure. What? What? Yeah, sex is fun and good exercise. So it's like team orgies? No, bro. No, bro, not the whole team, but sometimes one or two teammates get really intimate and sports are very physical, so sometimes sex happens. Dang, but doesn't that make things complicated? No way, bro. You just need to be, how they say, more emotionally responsible. Hey. You know, communicate, care about the other people involved and focus on having fun time together. And he has such a healthy outlook on sex, that's so good. No one up. No one to hug him so much. I love him. Smart. That's actually so wise, Scott. Oh, thanks, bro. You keep talking about sports for the rest of the night. You end up strongly considering joining the team. Whenever the prank masters go, hijinks ensue. Can you handle the consequences of their mess? Next week, all resource gains and losses from effects are increased by one. Okay, good to know. All right, we have two leads: money and stamina. I think we had money beforehand, but then we went to the con and we lost money, so that's fair enough. Himbo life goals right fucking there. Absolutely, Sam Holder! My turn on the driver's seat! Alright, where are we off to? Okay, probably just a mirage, you're seeing things, or gift shop. I kind of want to see what the mirage is, but okay, what's the purple one? Okay, we, we, one of the options is we might risk losing more of our mind than normal. You know what, let's try and maybe get some money back. And let's try and aim towards money being like the thing we're working towards. Let's go to the gift shop. 
I'm racing for some gravity falls shit. What sort of gift shop even is this? Just a pop-up stand in the middle of the desert? What? what are these products for sale? What are they for? What are they even made of? Well, this is definitely weird, but you might as well. Huh? Hey, wait a sec. That event time sign looks new. Oh. Yeah, according to the travel guide, the sign means that it's a quantities event. They work a lot like exchange events. We always lose and gain equal amounts of resources, but we have to guess which resources are tied to each option. The main difference is the amount of resources that are affected by each option differ. They can be affected a bit, some, or a fucking lot. Scott! Scott, you never swear. That's how the travel guy phrased it. Dang, so this foul mouth travel guide basically says that we can, cost, we can choose to play it uh, safe or go bonkers. <laughs> you already know that mama would, what mama would choose, Stephanie. But this one's up to you, boo. Go for it. Um, I'm gonna play it a little on the safe side, because we already have the chaos factor in it, so... Let's just go with bring the shop to the next level. You and your friends get out of the car and enter whatever this place is. What the fuck voice did I give you? Okay. It, it looks like a little code, I'm gonna give it a little code voice. Welcome to my gift shop, gullible customers. Feed your eyes on, feast your eyes on my shelves of products. Yeah, and you got a lot of cool rocks and stuff for sale here. What does it all do? Huh? Why are you ask questions so you can just enjoy things in ignorant bliss? <laughs> I didn't end up giving it a kid voice, more of like just a, a weird jellyfish voice. And here's the hat! Stippers hat. Hey, good point! Ooh. Noodles, you've got a really great business here idea here. Have you ever considered bringing this little gift shop stand to the next level? Of course. Soon my shop and I will ascend to the next evolutionary level, and then I will fight God. High five for optimism. Cool, cool, but how are you going to profit from that? I guess I never considered that. Do you have any ideas? Oh yeah, my friends and I are total business masters. Tell them, Scott. Huh. Can't talk right now, I was smelling noodles mystery rocks and one got stuck up my nose. <laughs> Pat, pat. Inhale harder and bend my creations into your brain. Okay, Stephanie, it's up to you. Tell Noodles all about how we're gonna turn this little roadside stand into the hottest shop in the middle of nowhere. Okay, guerrilla marketing. Throw the products at unexpected pedestrians, they will surely notice it when it hits their faces, and you can sell them more rocks to fight back. Plan a big complex media strategy to redefine rock beauty cannons so you can legally name these precious stones and sell them at a higher price point. Hmm. Let's go with the gorilla marketing tactic. I think that fits more the energy tonight. Our whole strategy is just throwing rocks at people. Won't that make everyone mad at us? Well, it's like they say, fuck around and find out. Okay. I like you, little shit. I like you. I, I want to play D&D &D with you. I I would like to see you bring this level of energy to a D&D &D table. I think it would be great. Noodles with no hesitation or remorse throws a rock at the passing pedestrian's forehead. Ow, says the pedestrian. Why would you do that? You could have killed me. Trust me, dear customer. Were it not for the laws of this land, I would have joyfully slaughtered you. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. You, Polly, and Noodles throw more rocks at passers-by. If they didn't want rocks thrown at them, why did they come to the desert in the first place, right? Soon, an angry mob with a collective headache confronts Noodles' stand. Why are you throwing rocks at us, they demand. Because I'm sick and twisted, but for a small fee, you can buy a rock of your own to throw back at me. Fine, we will. Hope you like the taste of granite, motherfucker. <laughs> they buy rocks to throw at Noodles. Noodles ducks and the rocks face right through Folly's forehead and hit more innocent bystanders. We did it again! Check it out, word of mouth marketing. We did it, guys. What you did was start an all-out rock throwing war in the middle of the desert and people buy more rocks to throw at each other. Success, you guess? Um, hmm. After lots of market research, I think we can say for sure that throwing rocks at strangers isn't nice. Yeah, fine. We lost three soul, but Noodles paid us plus three money in consultancy fees. With that kind of cash, we can buy good karma. I mean, not wrong. Alrighty. So we have a UFO sighting spot or the rodeo. Um. 
You have a sighting spot. We're kind of getting a little bit low on soul, so I might want to pep that up a little bit. So let's go with that. Finally, some respite from wacky stuff. Yeah, we're gonna go look for aliens. Oh shit. Why is the car stopped? Oh. Hey, Polly, look what time it is. Oh, fuck yeah, put the radio on. Welcome back to Convenient Exposition, the radio show with our guests who give narratively convenient road trip trips. Tips. There. Hey, Scarlet, how's it going? Okay, Scarlet, you are in for a treat tonight, because this game's already amazing, and we are going on a road trip with uh, Polly and Scott, and we may or may not be romancing Scott, so, who is just a wonderful himbo, so I hope you're in a good mood tonight, because this game is hilarious. I think you're going to have a good time. Mr. Thompson, Mr. McCarthy, can you tell us what you, uh, can you tell us about the mysterious resource known as stamina? Ah, oh, stamina, the full fuel for our body, Shyam. Oh, Scarlet, he is so very hot. But so very stupid. I've been called out several times by this game so far. Getting stamina is simple. Eat stuff, stay hydrated, get some rest. This is important since arduous activities such as exercising or having intercourse will eat up your stamina. Throwing your food away or using it in ways that don't involve eating it will also lower your stamina. Cormac, something you said about stamina reminds me of mind. It makes an experienced road tripper, uh, it takes an experienced road tripper to differentiate how resting raises your stamina, but relaxing raises your mind. You're spot on, Hunter. A strong, relaxed mind can save you from succumbing to road madness, and what, uh, to this day I suspect is an ancient deity preying on mortal psyches. Relaxing and finding enlightening will, enlightenment will keep your mind up, and so will strengthening your brain by learning new things. But if you overtax your brain, you actually risk lowering your mind. Anything that strains your brain can result in mind loss, from trying to comprehend the incomprehensible to getting in anxiety-inducing situations. You betcha, says the radio host. Even thinking a lot for too long, like myself, after this very edif edifying rumination, which is why we'll stop this episode right here. Cormac S. Thompson and Hunter McCarthy, everyone. <laughs> Thompson and McCarthy, am I right? No, I have no idea what you mean by that, Scott. <laughs> Me neither, Polly. Me neither. You came here today to answer the age-old question. Do aliens exist? We are not alone. Who knows if you'll see any today, but at least it'll be fun to hang out with some other UFO spotters. So besides watch the stars and swap extraterrestrial conspiracy theories, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to improve my soul just a little bit because it's lowering down to 8 and I want to keep all my stats at least above a 10. You come across a huge gathering of UFO spotters. You see lots of telescopes, constellation charts, and Jefferson Airplane CDs going around. You also see, uh, see, uh, also see Kale and Abdu. Hmm, hot. What's up guys? I didn't know you were onto UFO sightseeing. Hey bro! Hey bro! We're just on our road trip and decided to stop by. There's so many people with cool telescopes here. That's not all they got. UFO spotters have surprisingly diverse interests. Want us to give you the grand tour? Mm, your heart. Over there are the it crowd. They're the popular spotters who know the latest ends of the world prophecy gossip. The nerds by the creek te can test what chemicals the man is putting in the water. There's the uh, chemtrail spotters, the alien abductee support groups, the vehicle enthusiasts who know all the different UFO types. Oh, look, a hydrate check. I wonder what brought that on. Nipples hot. <laughs> what about those shiny guys over there? Are they UFO cosplayers or something? Those are the tinfoil hat fashionistas. They know all the latest fashion trends on how to protect your thoughts. What are they protecting their thoughts from? From the government, of course, the fashionista scoffs. Do you really want Big Brother in your head reprogramming all your thoughts? <coughs> oh no, I didn't even know I had a Big Brother, let alone that he was taking all my favorite thoughts away. I have a few to spare. It's okay, Scott. Don't listen to those well-dressed weirdos. Of all the shit the government might be doing, stealing your thoughts isn't one of them. And even if they were, wrapping your head up like a burrito wouldn't do anything to stop it. Aww. But now I'm nervous. You're making me nervous too, man. Oh, this anxiety is totally harsh in my vibe. Damn, if we don't calm, calm Scott down, we're gonna have some paranoid stillness on our hands. 
Hey, Stephanie, can you help him protect his mind somehow? If there are bodyguards, there must also be mind guards for hire, right? Right? Or protect your most valuable thoughts by flooding your brain with tons of useless ones. Hmm. Let's go with if there are bodyguards, there must also be mind guards here. Um. Yeah, let's go with that one. You look it up and there are mine guards for hire. What are the odds? You can only afford the cheapest ones, but it's okay to cheap out on guys protecting your thoughts and personality, right? You wire three money to an undisclosed account within moments you defy you two beefy Russian operatives parachute to the ground next to you. Damn, we lost some money. That's okay. We'll get it back. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Comrade, we are here to guard mine from invaders. Please be calm. One of the mine guards snaps his fingers in what appears to be a Z formation. You feel the same, if a little dissed. Congratulations, mind is secure. We leave now. What? That's it? How do we know Stephanie didn't just get scammed? We never scam. We prove it. Stephanie, think numbers. One to five hundred. Now you, dog man, try to guess number. Huh? Oh man, I didn't know th uh, there was going to be a test today. Um, 274? <laughs> Wow, that's a big number, Scott. I didn't even know you knew so many. Polly, you're you're adorable. Thanks, I've been practicing. So am I right? He actually is. It's fairly impressive, Scott. I guess your number, but this is looking more like a scam by the minute. Damn. Well. Damn. Well, this is why we was tested on. Obviously not completely tuned. Should be calibration now. Dogman, guess again. Okay, I'll try to be wrong this time. Uh, Stephanie is thinking of, uh, pineapples. Well, comrade, you were thinking pineapples? Nope, I was thinking of the number 69. I wonder why. Nice! <laughs> nice. Perfect. Mind guarding functions perfectly now. Just remember to clean your wax on locational and should be fine. Farewell, comrade. Congrats, Steph. Now your thoughts are safe from any weird older brothers. Now you definitely just got scammed, but at least Scott was relieved. You gained plus three soul for putting his mind at ease. Hell yeah. Well, let's go. Thank you for the hydrate check, Sam. Okay. Secluded village or used car dealership? I kind of want to see what the secluded village, uh, village is like. Monster Kind's last bastion of hope, also, I think. Let's go over here. That's a big wall. I hope we don't have to pay to get past it. This entire city is protected by a giant, by a giant impenetrable wall. Strange. The guards at the gate seem just as surprised to see you as you are to see them. I've never had visitors before, they say. How did you escape the jaws of the ravenous giants? You don't really know what they're talking about. You get the impression these villagers don't get out much. Some further investigation of this place is warranted. What do you want to check out? Uh, the church, the elders, or the people? Hmm. Yeah, um, it's either giving me, like, Shyamalan's The Village, or maybe some Attack on Titan vibes. I'm not sure yet. Maybe with, like, the church, the elders, the people, it's giving me more, more like, the village vibes. Hmm. I kind of want to go to the church. A weird secluded village like this must have some intriguing ideas about religion and the afterlife. You go check out the local church. There are several major churches in the town square with arguing crowds outside. I don't want to be intolerant of your beliefs, says one priest, but your beliefs are wrong and dumb and mine are right and you should be ashamed. The Temple of Tiny Folk teaches us that the giants are a punishment for the lives of sin. They stop eating us if we went to confession and banned all violent video games. No, it's Attack on Titan. Damn it. It's fine. It's fine. You're wrong, says another priest. The first church of giant saints teaches us that giants are here to save us, not punish us. The giants are God's holy messengers. God's language is consumption, and within the giants' bellies it is, promised af it is a promised afterlife. Another priest says, no, this is the afterlife. Per the church of nihilism, we're already dead, and the giants are a metaphor for our sins, literally binding us in the asses. A weird old man adds, I think the giants are a holy metaphor too. They're a metaphor, the inst instinctual desire to have sex with your mother. <laughs> Man. Please go to therapy. 
<laughs> yes, please. Oh, hello, new visitors. Are you interested in joining one of our parishes? Not really. Great, glad to have you on board. Now, do you believe that the giants are a force of evil or forces of good? I don't know. Maybe they're just forces? I never really liked how some religions enforce a black and white morality. Wrong answer. What about you, hairy man? Hmm. I think the giants are a metaphor too. For what? Oh! Um, being really tall. <laughs> You're such a good boy. Interesting theory, says the priest. So, having heard many of our spiels, is there a particular church that attracts you? Oh. Dang, I don't know. So many options. Stemmy, which re religious theory sounds most appealing to you? Oh, fuck. Giants are a punishment from God. We need to prove ourselves worthy to pass the test of God, which is a little 30 question test with a written essay. Giants have been guarding the walls for so long because they're NBA scouts looking for new talent. Welcome to the Church of Basketball. I kind of want to do the church basketball. Fuck yes. Wonderful, the basketball priest says. Then as we say in our church, God just sent his uh, draft list and it looks like you're in. Mm -hmm. Sweet, that was easy. So what are some of the tenets of the church of basketball? To be accepted into God's sacred lineup, you must commit to being the best athlete you can be. You can start by following the five basketball commandments. I, sorry, one, thou shalt not ru run with the ball without first dribbling it, as traveling is the utmost sin. Thou shalt respect, two, shalt, thou shalt respect the wisdom of the referee. Three, thou shalt not hit the ball with closed fist, only throw the ball or bat it with one or both hands. Four, thou shalt observe half time in a 15 minute interval to rest, rehydrate, rehydrate and pray. Five, thou shalt not murder. That makes sense. Murder is strictly against the rules of basketball. Cool beans. What are your church's services like? We do basketball drills, but in a God-honoring way. God, it's a youth camp. <laughs> Sorry. I went to Catholic school, I can make those jokes. <laughs> Fun! You change into sportwear and spend the next hour learning sacred basketball plays. They're in sports gear. His arms, though, I'm just saying. Great form, Polly. Stephanie, make sure you tuck your knees when you're doing a lordly layup. Excellent coaching, Brother Scott, the priest says, giving a pie him a pious slap on the ass. Just like the Lord wanted. Let's take a break and enjoy some Eucharist snacks. These protein bars represent the Lord's muscles, and this sports drink represents his blood and electrolytes. After the break, I'll teach you the theological three-pointer in the Hail Mary, but basketball. Huh. You know, bros, this has been fun, but I don't think I want to spend my life worshipping only basketball. All the other sports I like would be jealous. Blasphemy, cries the priest from across the court. If you're ready to bail, I'm too... I'm freaking exhausted. Who knew being an athlete of God would take so much stamina? He tipped her out while the priest is replacing his, uh, holy sweatband. At least you gain plus three hype playing basketball. Yay! Ooh. Okay, Doom's Diner, order something if you dare. Or Desert Foot, the heart and soul of the desert. I do appreciate a good pun, but I'm curious about the diner. I kind of want to go to the diner. Let's go to the diner. Uh, why is this road so uneventful? Why'd you say that, Polly? Scott! Oh, Scott, fuck! Turn the radio on. Convenient exposition has started already. We can't miss it. Roger. Mr. Thompson, what uh, were you telling us about hype again? Yes, let me repeat. Anything that makes you rejoice to your call gets your hype up. That includes laughing out loud, doing thrill-seeking stuff, or going to town. You know what I mean. Wink. I ke uh, like keeping my hype strong and vigorous. That is why I avoid all the stuff that will lower my hype. I like doing boring stuff, mingling with dull or annoying people, or choosing mundane solutions over epic ones. Amen. Speaking of boring stuff, you know what else is boring? Being a good person. <laughs> but sometimes you need to be if you want to keep your soul up. Oh uh, yeah, why do we need? Why do we need to have so uh, souls anyway? Beats me. At least soul is quite easy to manage. Doing good deeds, soul up. Being your worst soul, soul down. So remember, kids, don't underestimate the power of helping strangers when you're on the road. You've got to keep your soul healthy and clean. 
Amazing. Simply amazing. Your tips have been extremely helpful and incredibly uh, expositive. You've proved a great tutorial for anyone who aims to have a successful road trip. Call back S. Thompson and Hunter McCarthy, everyone. Yay! Whoa, Polly, I think I've grown as a person. Yeah, call back S. Thompson and Hunter McCarthy are part of the family from now on. Yeah. A toast to convenient exposition. Hooray! You read about this diner in a listicle of the top 10 most cursed restaurants you should never ever visit. Who is hungry? At least it's well ventilated. Obviously, you took that as a challenge. Seriously, after all the dark magic you've messed with over the years, you think you can handle the diner. So, now that you're here, what do you do? Alright, what do we need to improve on? Uh, all of our stuff is fairly good. Let's improve our hype a bit more. Use the jukebox. You enter the diner and approach the jukebox to play more, some tunes. But before you pick a song, your eerie waiter shows up to ruin your good time. Hi, Gerard. Just as broody as always. Hi. I see you finally got a job. Got out of your mom's basement. Proud of you. I wouldn't touch those if I were you. Uh, what? You were us? When were you us? I never noticed. It's okay, Scott. Uh, shh, Scott, it's okay. Gerard, stop confusing Scott with your past conditional tense and be of service here. <laughs> we're obviously not you. We're obviously not you, because unlike you, we're cool and fun and sexy, which means we're gonna play some music. You think you're better than me? Ha! Huh. Cool, fun, and sexy, and nothing to on stress, depressed, and hot, and sickly Victorian child way. <laughs> He's totally working on his Victor from Arcane cosplay. I just know it. Ah, <laughs> oh, stretch check. Thank you, Mornington Crescent. <laughs> He's coming for you, Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Besides, I'm trying to do you a favor. The reason you uh, shouldn't use the jukebox is because it's cursed. Plays jukebox harder. <laughs> ha! The only cursed thing here is the picture I found of a squirrel that ate a whole melon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> How did the squirrel manage to fit a whole melon in its body, Gerard? It shouldn't be anatomically possible, Gerard. Look at the squirrel, Gerard! Ugh, stop. Your bubbly stream of nonsense is cursed enough already. Go ahead and use the jukebox. It's your funeral. No, it's not. My funeral was way in a way cooler diner. Doesn't have any. Choose a dump curse track to play. Go full DDR and do Valkyrie Dimension and Beethoven Virus back to back. Ten uninterrupted hours of the happy birthday song. That is just so so cruel. That's probably gonna make my money go down because I'm putting money in the jukebox, so I'm fine sacrificing that. 10 uninterrupted hours of the happy birthday song. I want Gerard to suffer. Hey, seriously, I would not pick that one. Any other song, I don't care, just not that one. Hmm, you seem unsure. Let's give it a shot. Polly hits play and the diner is filled with that oh so familiar birthday tune. At first, the other dining patrons join in, thinking it must be someone's birthday today. What a joyful situation. You gain plus three hype. Then the song starts over. Most people still sing along. Maybe there are two birthdays today? Then the loop continues, replacing all the joy of its song with stress and ex existential dread. Repeated enough, you start to notice the sentence Happy Birthday to you sounds kind of ominous. And how strange is it to sing this weird-ass song in restaurants, to have workers sing to you, a complete stranger for successfully staying alive another year. That is one thing that I cannot fucking stand. Like, it's fine if other people do it and they like it. That's fine. You do you. I'm at a different table. If I'm, I'm kind of, like, unsure if I tell a server that, oh, it's my birthday, because I, I kind of want to see if I can maybe get something for free, but at the same time, I never, ever, ever, ever want a server to come up to me with a cake or a dessert and start singing at me. I will walk out of the restaurant, I will pay, I will then walk out of the restaurant. I, 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 I just can't, I can't handle that. No, 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 no,
May your birthday be filled with an endless stream of joy, dear dying a client. <laughs> Scarlet, no, I will punch you in the face. I'm dead serious, I will punch you in the face. If you do that to me. We're so happy you managed to survive this long as our planet continues its journey around the sun. Joy. <laughs> May you visit us again to celebrate with us when the planet is at the exact same point. We will await you here, most beloved stranger. <laughs> as you envision this common situation in the creepiest possible light, suffice to say the waitress, uh, waiters are bleeding holes for eyes. Chaos ensues around you. Clients are screaming and scratching the walls. Some stab their own ears. Many cry. One client begs for forgiveness and uh, as it is actually was their birthday and believe this is all their fault. <laughs> no. Oh, Scarlet, you wouldn't punch someone with a walking stick with you. Because it's you and because we are dear, dear friends, I will take your stick and I will beat you to death with it. <laughs> Everyone has lost it. Everyone but two people. Hey. Don't you love birthday parties, Polly? Everyone gets so excited for the cake! Mm -hmm. I don't know what everyone's problem is. The happy birthday song's got a damn dirty bass line. This track slaps. Of course, these two are beyond this insanity. Same isn't true for you, though. The endless happy birthday song erodes your mind. Oh no. I need to improve that now. I'm stopping at some rest. Let's get recharged. Uh, okay. I want to try and like, see if we can keep things going with Scott because this is a good boy. Time to snack. Time to slack. Okay, talk about his grandma or his love for chasing cars. Okay, we're on the second conversation now. Maybe we can start getting on some more personal topics. Let's talk about his grandma. Please don't make this weird. <laughs> my grandma's the best. She took care of me and my cousins when our parents left. <laughs> She's tough as nails. Imagine raising a whole wolf pack by herself. We have other relatives too, but she's like the glue that keeps everyone together. Like, she cooks gigantic, delicious meals to feed us all. Oh, I got it. One of my faves is pasta with pesto. It's an impressive pasta dish. The key to it is her secret sauce. It's green. A true mystery, you could say. She's also super wise, bro. She has lots of super clever sayings and proverbs she shares with us. Hmm. Stuff like, don't judge a book by its cover, or Scott, stop putting those tennis balls in your mouth, they're not edible. Such wisdom, much wisdom. She's the one who taught me that it's okay if I'm not very smart man, as, as long as I try to be a very good boy. <laughs> I can't, I can't with this game. He's such a good boy. I don't know why I'm getting this dumb and emotional over a wonderful, dumb, stupid game like this, but I love it. She says smarts or bravery or flashy and all, but kindness is what's is what really matters. I'm the best boy. You are. You really are. Pet, pet. I always try to be a good boy, so Grandma is proud of me. Agreed. He most certainly is, Scott. Thanks. You two sit in comfortable silence, looking at the stars. Alright, let's go with Hype, then. I don't know how many weeks we have, but let's just head towards Hype, then. Mer Kingdom Outpost, or Hell the Mer King. Or Raven the Desert. If the Raven's party in the middle of desert doesn't make a sound. Okay, let's go with Raven the Desert. Uh, cause that sounds very much like this chaotic combo's uh, cup of tea. What was there an earthquake? Scott, that is the fucking base. Oh, the voice actor for Scott is Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps. So, he, that's why he might sound a little bit familiar. In the middle of the desert, ravers and party goers have gathered to dance their cares away. You're drawn to some blurry figures in the crowd, ethereal beings who look like they were made uh, made out of party. Party time! Oh hey, some other uh, party go uh, party goers. Awesome. As you behold them, you wonder how should you milk the vibe of this rave? 
What do you want to do? Party 24-7? Find the best rave spot? Or try to get some drinks? Um, I want to party 24-7. Let's get the hype level up. Fuck yeah, it's time to party. You're considering where, the best, uh, where best to dance your ass off when three smiling spirits float up to you. Holy shit, is that Polly? Good to see you. Welcome to the rave. I apologize for this voice. It's gonna get real annoying. Oh my god, hey! Scott, Stephanie, make my clubbing crew some of Macarena and cheese. Uh, they're the ghosts of parties past. Ah, uh, Scott and Stephanie. Polly talks about you all the time. So nice. She really loves you guys. Gosh, Polly is the best. I hate this voice. I hate the fact that I could do this voice, but it, it when I play this game, I just get weird and experimental with my different voices, and then it's like, oh wait, I can do that voice. Sweet. Good to know. She is. How's everything, girl? Are you liking the party so far? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. We were just deciding what DJ set to listen to first. That's a big question. Macarena Summer and I got that shit down to a science. We put together a DJ schedule. We'll rotate, uh, we rotate met, uh, methodically, methodically throughout the sets so that we're always changing and curating our vibes. Vibing is like the best. We even schedule visits to the bar and the bathroom, even though we don't actually have to use the bathroom anymore. It's part of the vibes. It's so horrible. I love it. I'm so sorry. If it's genuinely annoying, I'll stop. But it fits the vibes of these characters. Of course, it's like an hour we're going to get these two blitz to actually follow our, our schedule and we'll probably just wind up wherever it feels right. <laughs> Relatable. Hey. Which DJ are you scheduled to listen to now? Well, we just finished our schedule and mingle with other ravers times. So we're actually ahead of schedule. Cool, so we have like an opening, don't we? We can like do some more ecstasy. We can do that and hit up another set. Do you guys have any preference for who we listen to next? All right. Hypno D, uh, D and J, the Robo Robo Warlock, trances DJs who will put a spell on you, surrender to the groove, or Dead Mouse, the skillful French mouse that controls a funky corpse uh, by pulling its head to create the most frantic DJ set in town. Oh my god, both of those are awesome. I love me some Daft Punk. And then there's Zombie Ratatouille. That voice reminds me of the snarky My Immortal voice. No. No, like, for this game especially, I want to try and, like, do a, a ton of variations for different voices for the different characters. <laughs> but it's all good. Oh, like, maybe if we come by here again, I'll pick Hypno D and J, but Dead Mouse. I'm just, like, pick picking the most chaotic options at this point. Because, yes, let's go with Dead Mouse. Excellent choice, Dead Mouse is the hottest DJ in Europe right now. We've got a, he's got a, they've got a great rags to riches story too. The duo got started as a gourmet chef in Paris, with the mouse controlling the chef's movements by pulling on his hair. Oh, oh I think I've heard the story before. But there was like a twist. The chef died. So sad. How everything eventually dies. But Mouse wasn't ready for his career to be over. He knew he couldn't keep the corpse employed as a chef, though. Too unsanitary. So they became a DJ Darrow because, you know, DJ is like cooking with sound and vibes. I mean, she's not wrong. So nice. Everything is eventually reborn. Well, weird backstory aside, Dead Mouse turns up to be turns out to be an amazing DJ playing remix bops from the uh, 2000s. Yes. This set is incredible. Isn't it great? By pulling on the corpse's hair, Dead Mouse pulls on the heartstrings of nostalgia. Oh, remember having functional heartstrings? <laughs> I hope wherever my corpse is, it's been controlled by a rodent. Ah, <laughs> oh, mine is too. You gain plus three hype, uh, raving like you're a kid again. Except you're not a kid, and raving is hard on your aging joints. You lose three stamina. I've okay. got a good feeling about this. We're almost maxed out on hype. Okay, the hole or futuristic gas station. We just need a few more points um, for the hype and then we're good. Mm. 
I want to see. I. I want to see the whole. That was so fun. Can't hear you. A hole in the desert. Man, they'll turn anything into a tourist trap, huh? Hey, Colrena, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely lost tales. You are welcome at the Blue Rose Worst by any time. Take a seat and enjoy yourself. We are enjoying this amazing game. Um, it just came out today and I love it. I love it so much. The vibes are just immaculate. Looks really deep. Some say the hole is bottomless, but that can't really be true, can it? Well, since you're here, what do you want to do? Um, okay. We're going more for hype this time, so... Hmm. Let's up the... What are we doing so far? Uh, everything else isn't too bad. Let's ad ad Let's admire it. You all pick up a guided audio tour from the gift shop and enjoy a tour of the hole together. Polly, Polly, listen. Polly, the nice British man on this tape says the first hole was dug over a million years ago. I didn't know we even had that many years ago. Man, check out this hole. This is a nice hole. <laughs> I thought staring into the bottomless pit of darkness would be existential and weird, but it's actually pretty chill. After the tour, you drop off, your, drop off your audio tours at the gate with a nice elderly couple who runs this Bye. place. Thanks for the cool hole, guys. It's been real. They start to wave goodbye, then the old man bursts into tears. Oh, oh sorry. Was it something we said? Uh, it's been unreal. Is that better? No, don't worry. You kids were great. The other old man sighs. We wish we could find more visitors like you to keep us from going bankrupt. We bought this hole 40 years ago from a handsome entrepreneur who promised to make us rich and famous overnight. Huh. You bought a hole in the desert from a guy? Did he even dig it? I'm pretty sure some guy just scammed you into giving him uh, money for a hole. Sure, but at first, our investment paid off. The bottom of this hole was once what you kids might call the new Coachella. But now Coachella is the new Coachella, and none of the young folk come to see the hole anymore. Look, we can help you get more customers, I guess, but you've got to promise to invest your money better from now on. Sounds like a plan. Time to put your business consultancy pants on, uh, put on your business consultancy pants and help the old couple rebrand the hole to make it popular again. Okay, mark the hole to basic crass dude bros who brag about having been in every hole. Or mark the hole as the perfect starting point for very bad golfers. Hmm. I kind of like the golfers one. Ick to do bros. Let's go with uh, the golfers one. Soon bad golfers from all over flock to the hole. They bring golf balls, putters, and backup putters for when they accidentally throw their original putters into the hole. Lame. Wow, Stephanie, this is shockingly boring. Shocking because golf was already so boring and you somehow made it worse. Huh. This is weird. Golf is a sport and has like... Uh, balls like this all of, like all yeah, like all the best sports, but even I can't get hyped about this. I'm somehow down three hype about this. You watch two businessmen approach the bottom of this hole. They hit their balls a couple of times but can't sink a single putt. I sure do love golf, one says as he hits his ball backwards. It's so fun and not tedious or soul crushing at all. You're right. Golfing is every bit as fun as a meeting that that could have been an email. Wait, do you find that fun? No, actually. I think I've developed a subconscious association between business and golf. Do I only golf for business reasons? I think I do too. Why are we torturing ourselves like this? Why do we have boring business meetings while doing the most boring activity on earth? I have no idea. I think one person suggested it a long time ago, perhaps ironically, and I've kept it up uh, out of pure inertia on everyone's part. Well, I'm never t well, I'm tired of it. Let's have our, our next meeting somewhere actually enjoyable, like a laser tag arena or a skate park. Well, I'm kind of impressed. I didn't think two white-collar business types would be interested in skating or laser tag. That's just a stereotype. We work in business, but we don't live where we work. We still have fun shredding up a skate park. Party! Want to party with us later? And that's the story of how you saved a small business and can uh, and snort a coke off a stockbroker's skateboard at the same day. Perfect. The whole owners pay you plus three money for your consultancy. Let's go. 
I need something that in improves my hype a bit. No. Let's go to the farm. I hope they have sheep. I want some sheep's clothing. Oh, Scott, you're such a good boy. Good puppy. Ah, farm life. Sometimes it's nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Farmers enjoy clean air, homegrown food, and simple living. Sure, it comes at the price of having to do a lot of hard labor and usually only having livestock for company. But fuck it. Today, you're all about that cottage core life. What part of the farm do you want to see first? Hmm. Let's go to the crops. You and your friends wander the farm for a little bit when you run into its owner. Oh, you're so cute. And they're, oh my God, they're in country gear. Oh my God, they're both so cute. Uh, hello, strangers. My name's Jacqueline. I just moved into the valley, so I'm still getting to know everyone. What are your names? Huh. I'm Polly. My hairy friend here is Scott, and that's Stephanie. Howdy. Nice to meet you. You have a really nice farm. Thanks. This farm belonged to my dear grandfather until he passed away. I've always been interested in rural cottagecore lifestyle, so I thought I'd try restoring it. <laughs> Sweet! Are you raising cute cows and knitting comfy sweaters and drinking all the homemade apple cider you always dreamed of? Well, I'm not exactly. Money's been tight ever since I moved here. My crops haven't really been selling. Why? What's wrong with them? Oh no. Oh no no no. Jacqueline leads you to a crop rows which are filled with plump, ripe, severed heads. <laughs> Oh, I get it. I'm having a nightmare. When's the part where all my clothes disappear right before the big game? Oh, my homegrown heads are not a nightmare. I don't understand why everyone's so freaked out by them. Monsters and humans are always growing my people's heads, carving them up for holidays and turning them into pies. And you don't see me complaining. Much. I just wanted to bring some of my culture into the valley, but nobody's buying my heads. And now I'm banned from the farmer's market for traumatizing the baker's son. Chin up, Jacqueline. Or stem up, I guess. <laughs> I'll think of a way to make a profit off these severed heads. What do you suggest, Stephanie? Infuse some intelligence into the heads. If you put 300 of them together, maybe we'll collectively write the next great American novel? Maybe the farmer's market is the wrong market for these heads. You've heard of a local market that's super into spare monster parts called the black market or something. I want to see how chaotic the black market one goes. I'm not sure what it's gonna sap. It's probably gonna take a piece of my soul away, but fuck it. Sounds fun. I visited the mar farmer's market, the supermarket, and even the night market since I moved here. But the black market will be a new experience for me. Okay, just don't go tell anyone that while we're here, that we're there. Uh, also be careful not to step on any used needles. You'll head down to the black market, which is a physical place you can visit in Monstropolis, as long as you're pinky swear you're not a cop. <laughs> wow, the prices on these seats are insane. The grocer in the valley never charged me $200 for weeds. Um, that's not what you think it is, sweetie. <coughs> Jacqueline, I found someone looking for severed heads. They're from a gang of headless guys. I think it's pronounced Douglas Hands. Wrong. We are the, we are the Dula Hands. Booms a headless knight on a black horse. Oh, you, are you the brainless one when I'm the one who's lost me head? You lost your head, you say? I've got plenty of prosthetics for sale. Oh, she's so cute. Aye, that's perfect. The Dullahan gang is always looking for heads to replace our own when we lose them. They also make great fashion statement. Do you have any Art Deco heads for sale? Um, no. Just homegrown human heads. Homegrown, you say? I'll take the lot. It's good to support local businesses, after all. The dual hands buy Jacqueline's whole stock and you gain plus three money. You lose three soul for dealing in the black market, but still, money. A new day, a new adventure. Okay, it's either going to be hype or money. Honestly, I'm kind of fine with either one. Pancake diner. Movie set. Let's go to the movie set and get that hype on. Bye, cows. Everyone at some point wonders what it's like to be a movie star. And action. 
You still don't know what that's, what that's like. You're just a humble road tripper trespassing on a movie set. And this might be the closest you ever get to Hollywood, so make the most of it. What are you doing? I want to get an autograph. You heard that cool Josh, the famous actor, singer, songwriter, esports champion, skateboarding prodigy, and top 10 chess grandmaster, is filming on this set. You and your friends obviously need to get his autograph. You sneak on the set and find his trailer next to some bushes. Psh, over here. Huh? Uh, can anyone else hear that bush talking? I'm no bush. You've just fallen prey to my clever disguise, as the youth say, get wrecked! Oh, hey, Counselor Flodge. I didn't know you worked here. I don't. There's actually a warrant out for my arrest for breaking and entering onto this set. But those cops are no match for my costume kit. Nice. Nice. We snuck onto set because we heard cool Josh was filming here. I'm going to get him to sign my bra. Well, good luck with that, kiddo. I've been trying to show cool Josh my screenplay all week. <laughs> Thanks for the stretch check, man. Like, man, I feel like that's a punishment for dabbing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the hydro check too. Hmm. It's an autobiographical documentary called Hidden in Plain Sight, and Cool Josh is the only actor who can capture me on screen. Maybe if you can, can get Cool Josh out of his trailer, we'll get the project off the ground. Well, you do have a vested interest in meeting Cool Josh. Find a way to get him out of his trailer. Maybe it's not about getting the actor out of the RV, but about getting yourself inside the actor. Inside of his head, you curve. Talk to him intensely. Lure him out with an Academy Award. I feel like we have money to burn now, so... Let's go with that. You knock on the door of Cool Josh's trailer. Hi. We're with the Academy, here to present Cool Josh with an Oscar. I just need to come out here and sign these uh, legal documents. Wait, real? I feel like he should have an English accent. Wait, really? That's awesome. An Oscar is the last thing I needed to be in a, uh, I needed to be in an S-tier celebrity status. Uh, what? S-tier? What's that? You don't know? All celebrities are secretly ranked on a tier list from F to S. It's kind of like the stock market, but with popularity. Even less ethical. A C tier celebrity is lucky to star in a shitty 90s sitcom reboot. A B tier might get a lead in a made for TV drama. But an A tier? You get a big budget movie contracts, multi platinum records, and total immunity to being cancelled on Twitter. That's where I am. One of the Oscar winners ever achieve S tier, though. I've even heard rumors that S tiers are given their own genetically modified clone from the Academy. So where's my Oscar? I assume Not As Cool Josh will be delivered in nine months or so. Oh, your Oscar is, uh, this thing's. Polly Hands Cool Josh, one of Scott's weird clay sculptures. So what's wrong with your face? Wow, it looks just like me. Thanks. Cool Josh signs your paperwork and then gives you a lock of his hair for DNA replication. Plus three hype. But you lose three money because Cool Josh apparently expects a cash prize with his Oscar and doesn't take no for an answer. Fucking celebrities. I think he's supposed to be a pelican and that was like an octopus trying to escape or something. I don't know. Time for some leg stretching. All right, Scott, how you doing? Time to snack. Time to slack. What the tongue do though? Sam's asking the real questions here. <laughs> After some conversations, you activate, activate a deep conversation. This is your first one. Deep conversations can end in success or failure, and the, the key to scoring a date ending. Hitchhikers have only one uh, covered a deep conversation each, while Polly and Scott have two. So once a player succeeds in a deep conversation, and sometimes even if they fail it, no other player can attempt it. Okay, this is more for like if you're playing with like friends and stuff and uh, it's kind of a bit more of a competitive thing. Act fast because whoever gets there first will be the only one with a chance of finding love. How do these work though? During the first half of a deep conversation, your monster friend will hint at their preferences on, on a topic that's important to them. Think of the things as as the think of these hints as rules. When looking at the options, search for ways in which they break the rules. Two out of the three will break the rules somehow. The one that breaks the rules is the right option. Choose that one to show your friend you really know and understand them. So, are you a good listener or not? Sports. Sports! 
Ooh, sports are the best, bro. There's so many cool sports, and yet there's so many more. The world needs more sports. We can invent a new sport. Oh! Whoa, really? Yeah. Um. I've hmm. actually always wondered how and where sports are made. I suspected God created them at the beginning of everything because God's creations needed healthy, playful exercise. I didn't know you believed in God, Scott. Awesome, bro! But I'm not sure that we even uh, about that even more after this cool reveal. We can create sports ourselves. Let's do it now, actually. Let's do it! Really? Hooray! Okay, so what should our new sport be? Whatever you want it to be. What do you usually like in a sport? Go team! Um, teamwork? I love how sports make a group of people be tight and loyal and have fun. One person sports are okay, but I feel bad for the players. I just feel lonely. And thrill. A sport needs cool epic moments that make you go like, wow. Like, a fierce competition? Hey. Exactly, but not too fierce, you know? I don't know if you ever realized this, but sports sometimes makes some people get a bit mean. That's not cool. Not cool at all. Woof, woof, woof. And balls. Balls are the objectively best things about sports. I love balls. You can hold them, you can toss them, you can bounce them, you can put them in your mouth. Sure. You have a lot of ideas on how to create a new sport. Huh. Great, yeah. So this new sport could be... Hmm. Uh, I got nothing. Nothing but a headache. Stephanie, could you help me, please? Football, it's like football, but better high st football too. It's like football, but better high stakes, more thrill. You win, you die, and more balls. It's more than one ball. There's like five balls. Or oh, butt ball. Like, didn't they say like the one that doesn't match is the best one? Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that what the narrator said? Because you would think like football too would be the answer. The one that breaks no rules. Okay. Uh, okay, in that case, Football 2 Electric Boogaloo, I think, is the right one. Oh, shit. Okay. Because I picked the yes op- like, the easy option, so there's no wrong choice, so that makes sense. Is it butt ball? Oh. Butt ball. Butt ball. That sounds great. It's not a bad idea, bro. I sometimes wonder why sports get so limited as to which parts of the body get all the spotlight. There's handball that focuses on hands, there's football which fo also focuses on hands. I didn't share it before because I wasn't sure if it was a dumb thought. I have a lot of those. Oh, it isn't dumb, Scott. You were clearly in onto something. We can tackle that problem tonight. With football. Oh, I got it! Football. Football. Hey. Stephanie, we're going such a good- we're doing such a good deed tonight. So many muscles in the body, so few of them get to be the true main muscle of the sport. That ends tonight. Ow! Hooray! How would Bubble Goal go, though? I don't exactly- I don't know exactly, Scott. I have- but I have notes. Uh, which is mostly football, but butts, and some doodles of butts. Look. Awesome, bro! This is some good butt doodles. I think this is a great start, bro. Things. Let's put our heads and butts together. We got this. Go team! Team must go go go. Spend the rest of the night brainstorming about butt ball. No. It sounds like a terrible sport, but you have a great time with Scott nonetheless. And that's what matters. Is Scott more than a friend? Yes. Okay, we just need a little bit more hype. And then we're good. I'm fully charged. All right. Wedding. We get the last little bit of hype we need. I now pronounce you Wedding Crashes. And that's why I can never go back to that bakery. Oh, no wonder.
Ah, oh, weddings. The union of two or more soulmates pledging life and love to each other for the rest of their days. If you believe in that true love stuff. If not, at least weddings are a fun place to dress fancy and get drunk. Free rice! Woo! They're also fun to crash, which is what you're doing now. So, what do you want to do? I want to catch the bridal bouquet. It's time for the bouquet toss. You've been training your entire life for this moment. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! This game is feeding us tonight. We have these two looking amazing in a suit and a dress, respectively, and both of them are so very hot. Just okay. I would steal Polly's dress. Not gonna lie, I would. I would wear that dress. I would absolutely wear that dress. Also, my boy Scott. He look, he's got his hair slicked back and everything. Damn, Stephanie, you really won that VK. Let me guess, you're anxious to find that special someone and do the do. And here I thought you left your horny ways behind after the monster prom. Nope, you're Stephanie, horny for life, if only because I said so, which means you need to catch that freaking VK. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. What does catching a bouquet of flowers have to do with finding love? <laughs> catching the bride's bouquet is a tradition. Whoever catches it is, uh, it will supposedly get married next. It's nonsense, but it's fun nonsense. Sounds cool. I've always wanted to have a hobby that combined romance and full contact sports. Nice. I just like how chaotic the whole thing is. As everyone's throwing down to catch some flowers because they really want a bone. It's awesome. I'm ready for you, Stephanie. Don't be afraid to tear a bitch's hair out to get that bouquet. <laughs> Shit, the pressure's really on now. Not only to catch the bouquet, but to impress your friends too. You need a foolproof uh, plan to stash those flowers. Think of something. Plan to track on the bouquet so you never lose sight of it. Those flowers aren't going anywhere. Don't leave anything to chance. It's time to wish, uh, spend wish number one from the monkey's paw. Ask to catch that goddamn bouquet. Hmm, I don't want to fuck around with a monkey's paw because I know you don't mess it, make a wish on a monkey's paw. Uh, plant a tracker in the VK. Oh, that's fine. We've got money to spend. You pay full money for a fancy tracker and sneak it into the bouquet without the bride noticing, then get in position to catch it. The bride tosses the bouquet and in slow motion, you watch it somersault through the air, only to be snatched by some punks in leather jackets. No! I'll beat the shit out of you for that, okay? Aww. Hey, what's the big idea? Are you even invited here? Huh? Uh, Polly, were we even invited here? We don't need an invitation, says one of the punks. We're the anti-wedding biker gang, the notorious scourge of the wedding industry. Modern wedding culture is dumb. People spend so much money on useless shit like tuxedos and bad DJs. That money should be spent on your rad Harley. That's why we crash weddings and steal bouquets, to prevent the spread of wedding fever. Without this bouquet, none of you can get married. Before anyone can stop them, the bikers hop onto their motorcycle and ride off. All hope is lost. No. No, that's right. You have that tracker. No, that's right. You have that tracker. You and your friends jump into your car and follow the flowers location to the bikers. While Scott drives and Polly cheers you on, you jump onto the leader's bike. You knock him out, grab the bouquet, and jump back in your car as the bike explodes. We did it! Hooray! We all worked together and got the bouquet back as a team! Sure. You return the bouquet and gain plus four height for your daring car chase. Let's go! Battle Royale or regular gas station. Battle Royale. Sure, why not? Welcome to the Battle Royale, where there are only two rules, kill or be killed. Stopping to visit the place where everyone's murdering each other was a sort of questionable decision on your part. But it's too late to leave now, so how will you survive? I'm going berserk! That's right, you didn't come here to play, you're here to make this bloodbath your bitch! Are you sure about this, Stephanie? Won't we lose lots of soul by killing innocent people? We have enough to lose. 
Are we really are they really innocent if they're trying to kill us first though? Besides, we sign those waivers of the entrance protecting our soul from being lost in wanton murder. Let's do it! Oh okay. I'm fine with killing people as long as we can do it with a healthy conscience. You enter the fugue state, slaughtering fools with guns and knives and bare hands and anything else your twisted heart desires. But no matter how many people you kill, every time you look at the death toll leaderboard, there's no name there's a name consistently ahead of you. Mama's back. Hi, Dahlia. Hey, Stephanie. Look at you, holding on to second place like it's your mother's skirt. <laughs> I'm almost impressed. What if you came here thinking you'd defeat Dahlia, Aquino? Buff blue war at Warmongress Extraordinaire, you've got another thing coming. Go, team! You can beat her, Stephanie. Use your underdog candidate powers to win at the last minute. Sorry, boo. No offense, Stephanie, but I'm putting my money on Dahlia here. I saw her smash a watermelon with a headbutt once. I don't think there's an ass she can't kick. What are you idiots doing? Are you seriously turning this soulless murder fest into a game? Can't you see this whole battle royale is a ploy by our corrupt government to turn violence into entertainment so we won't notice all the atrocities they commit? Hi Katniss. If that's true, then it's working. I am massively entertained. Batniss probably has a point. Fuck, she even has a braid, God damn it. Uh, but if you start catching morals now, you'll never outmurder Dahlia. The thing is, Polly's right. You'll never defeat Dahlia in sheer body count. But if she's focusing on quantity, maybe you can defeat her by going for quality kill. Do what cool kids do these days. After murdering someone in cold blood, perform a silly internet dance. It's proven to be a perfect pairing. Or kill them forever. Before murdering them, harvest their souls and hoard them all together in a single raccoon. Vicious. Okay. Hmm. I want to put their souls on a raccoon. Cut to two survivors hiding behind a rock while the battle royale rages on. We've somehow made it this far, Curtis. With our alliance and a bit of luck, we might be able to win this wretched thing. We've got this, Ted. We just have to stay vigilant. If we could just make it to the river, we can. Curtis is cut off by a bullet cleaving his skull in two. So much for vigilance! Then something bursts out of the bushes. It's you, Stephanie, wielding a knife. Fuck it, Ted screams at you. You've already you've already got my boyfriend. I don't care anymore. Just kill me. Wait, what are you doing? Why are you drawing glyphs on that cardboard box with my blood? Ted dies before you can answer him. And then, with down four magic, that's fine, he wakes up inside the cardboard box. But something doesn't feel right. Whoa, a newcomer says a voice in his head. Welcome to the Raccoon Collective. The Raccoon, what? What are you talking about? Ted cries. You were stabbed to death by that weirdo who drew glyphs in your blood, right? Yeah, that person was adding your soul, soul to the body of a dead raccoon. It ain't paradise, but we've got to make do. We're all, we all control a different part of the raccoon and try to work together. I control the front leg, Muhammad's on the tail duty, Jason does the blinking, Pink Z controls the back legs, and my wife's on the lungs. So what part do you want to control? Don't say the penis, Natalie already called that one. <laughs> I just want to die, Ted weeps. Well, since you're not choosing, I'm assigning you the anus. Nobody's taken it yet and the raccoon really needs to poop. Good luck. Wow, being from hell, I thought I knew the depths of torture. With a raccoon purgatory, you're condemning your victims to his next level. I know an indeed. Here, take the spoils of our battle. Plus four hype for you. I'm fully charged. Hey. Factory. <gasps> Factory's boring. Secret government lab, though. Can't believe we made it out of there. It's good to be alive. Are you a government conspiracy theorist? Well, you're about to be. Science! Welcome to the secret government laboratory, where all your favorite politicians order their scientists to play God. There are grisly experiments, mutated creatures, and crimes against monstrosity galore. Also, guys, this stream's been going on for two hours. Amazing how time flies. Fuck. What catches your interest? Scientifically test, scientific test gone horribly wrong. Check the weird cloudy tank with the menacing silhouette or weird forbidden experiments. I wanna check out the cloudy tank. You're wandering around the lab when you find a huge cloudy tank in the back surrounded by warning signs. Molly, I have a question. The sign says beware of Beware of sex amalgamate, handle only with hazmat suit and post nut clarity. 
What's the sex malgamate? Let's read those notes and find out. The sex malgamate was discovered wandering the woods, screaming incoherently and setting occasional fires. It excretes pure sex foam. Sex or fate. The chemical that makes all things sexy. Cool. With this lucky find, we'll be able to painfully extract sex or fate from the creature for the rest of the sh its short, miserable life. What could go wrong? What does it say after that? Uh, it's mostly ketchup stains on the last pages. Scientists probably eat fries on the job, too. Yeah, did we, we just walk into the SCP Foundation? Shit! You say there's a weird, sexy creature in this tank? It smells familiar, like lighter fluid, hairspray, and angst. Oh no. Is that. Damien, no! Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Hold the fucking phone. You're telling me that the scientists discovered a creature that's basically the mutant pinnacle of pure sexiness? And it looks like Damien? Sup, noobs. <laughs> Damien, you fucking loser. What? I see that leg in a garter. Good for you, Damien. This is Bull. Why Damien of all people? I'm the fan favorite Polly. I've got the bodacious bod and the ass that won't quit. Aww. What a little abomination. We should free him. He deserves to have a full sexy life. Ugh. I guess that's true. Poor, poor Motsai, Damien. Your bussy was just too poppin' for this world. <laughs> this fucking game! <laughs> How should we get him out? Use the art of disguise. With enough fake mustaches, no one will be able to tell that this is multi Damien. With the art of deception, convince the guards you're just taking multi Damien out for his court mandated afternoon constitutional. Uh, we're pretty much good for everything. Mm. Use the art of disguise. You check your wallet and realize that enough fake mustaches had better be one big fake mustache because that's all your uh, down for money can buy. Oh my god, this game. <laughs> Works for me. You all sneak mul the multi Damien down the hall. You can see the exit, but just before you reach it, a security guard steps in your path. Wait, you can't leave without clearance, says the guard. I need to confirm you're not esca escaped experiments or newborn baby clones or anything. I'm not a spicy red baby. I'm sure you aren't, sir, but you know how the big wigs in corporate get. I've just got to ask you some routine questions to verify your identity. One, what's your preferred material of choice? Metal. I see. I prefer wood myself, but I won't judge your preferences. Two, how old are you? I'm a spicy red adult. Ah yes, the prime of one's life. I miss my spicy young adult years. Last question, and then I'll let you go. What is your legal name? <laughs> oh really? Must be a foreign name I'm not familiar with. Is that spelled with six or seven R's? Suddenly an alarm goes off. Everyone evacuate the speaker screams. Sex amalgamate on the loose. Oh, crap. The guard puts his hand on his gun. Shit, you're done for. You guys better evacuate, he says. But take my gun before you go. Sex amalgamate's dangerous a dangerous beast, and you civilians should protect yourselves. Good luck. Bye! You got it, bro. See you later. Woohoo, you successfully freed the multi damien to wander the wilds again. You gain plus four soul for your efforts and a free gun. The road awaits. We did good, guys. We did good. Okay, the Gothic Manor or Wild West Town. Listen, we're driving on a road trip and we st we're driving past a massive gothic manor and I'm not going to stop there? Yes, please. Please have brooding vampires. Please have brooding vampires. Please have brooding vampires. And a long white nightdress. <laughs> you and your friends are driving quietly along the highway. Well, it's quiet if you ignore Polly loudly groaning anyway. Uh, are we there yet? I'm so bored. Me too. Want to play a game while we drive? We can play I Spy. Okay, I'll start. I spy with my little eye something brown, hairy, and handsome. Is it you? Did you spy yourself? Hey. Close. I spy the guy in my rear view mirror. He's always there watching over me while I drive and giving me a thumbs up. 
see, the thing is, I read these lines and I like get into the vibe of reading these lines in the character's voice and then like it hits me afterwards and I'm like, you're such a good boy. Uh, sure. I won this round, so it's my turn now. I spy with my little eye something that starts with I. Okay, that's a genuine challenge. You look out the window to see what Polly might have spied. Oh, maybe it's that. The lizard? But lizard starts, doesn't start with an I, does it? Then is it that thing? Um, I don't think so. That's just a weird looking house. Then maybe it's that guy. The Sicilian? What does he have to do with the letter I? <laughs> I think he's Florentine, actually. Man, this is impossible. You need to think outside the box with- Oh, uh, sorry, that was narrator. Man, this is impossible. You need to think outside the box. What did Polly spy with her little eye? An invisible something? She's a ghost. She can see this shit. Okay, an invisible what? No idea. You use three magic to cast a spell that lets you see beyond regular light uh, light wavelengths. Infrared, ultraviolet, gamma waves, the color uh, shmorange. They're all suddenly visible before your very eyes. Awesome, bro! Awesome, what do you see, Steph? Well, I see that someone's been having sex in the backseat of this car. Gross. Sorry, Bill. Oops, my bad. I'll put a towel next time. Polly! At least wipe the seat down before we all sit there. Come on. You can see where the seams of the monster realms and the human realms overlap. You're surrounded by humans that are operating on another plane of existence. You're also surrounded by ethereal, otherworldly creatures floating around in God knows which other realms. You notice a group of invisible insectoids on the side of the road. They seem sinister, like they've been plotting something. Something against you, maybe? Is it invisible or off-putting insectoids? <laughs> Yep, you got it, Boo. Though, I would have also accepted Iguana as the correct answer. <laughs> oh, so that lizard did start with an eye. Sorry, I talked you out of it, bro. How did you see those creepy invisible bug people in the first place? Because I have ghost powers, or I'm just hallucinating because those super shrooms finally kicked in. Hard to tell, really. I knew she had superpowers. Okay, whatever. Take the three hype for winning a high spy. You're driving along when the road is flooded by a sudden thunderstorm. You have no choice but to pull over and look for shelter. Welcome to the manor. That would totally be me. But, because I totally don't at all have um, a, uh, a a long dressing gown, long velvet dressing gown and a white night dress prepared for any such occasion that I just happen to be driving past a uh, spooky manor with my friends. And then the car conveniently breaks down and we have to stay, spay the, spend the night there. But of course there's a breeding vampire in the attic who hasn't seen or interacted with another person in hundreds of years. And of course we um, embrace him for the true monster that he actually is because he's perfect and he doesn't need to change a thing. And then it's, of course it suddenly starts raining. I'm writing fanfiction in my head again. Let's continue. <clears throat> But in the revolver darkness of the blackest night, burning bright, there's a guiding star. No matter who, no matter what or who you are, you know how the lyrics go. With wet newspapers over your head. Okay, I know where we're going. You arrive at the ominous Gothic manor, knock on the door, and invite it in. Once inside, where do you go? Hello. The history transpiring through the walls, the dramatic chamber music, or the exquisite banquets. Uh, the dramatic chamber music, because that usually means it's a vampire playing on the pipe organ. Hey, what's that thumping noise from the attic? Steph went upstairs and never mind, we don't want to know. Um, it's only maybe a point of concern if you see like the blood dripping like from a pool on the ceiling and the thumping is continuing and then you realize, oh, like this everything everything's fine she's a big girl she can take care of herself <laughs> you follow the haunting music to a grand ballroom where a cloaked figure in a white masquerade mask is playing the organ he greets you no i swear if we go fan of the opera i'm a little bit obsessed with fan of the opera just a bit so I... One second. 
Okay, we're going fan the for one second. Okay. O oh, strangers, behold my tragedy. The operas I compose are only to be sung by the angel who has stolen my heart. You rang? <laughs> Ooh, sounds saucy. Who's the lucky one? I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute! A beautiful singer of passionate mezzo-soprano voice who visits this manor every night to rehearse her mesmeric music. I'm here! I'm here! I'm arrived! Just give me five seconds to get into costume. Oh look, a hydrate check. A lot of hydrate checks. Because it, in a weird way, it feels like this game was made for me. Or maybe I'm just having incredible luck with the choices that I'm making tonight, because this game is resonating with my soul. I'm having such a good time tonight, guys. If only I was brave enough to ask her to become the star of my grand opera. But alas, ah, she's here. Scott, Stephanie, let's go check this out. Maybe we can hook this weirdo up with this mysterious lady. Copy that. You go to the entrance hall and see the organist muse entering the house. Oh no, fuck off. Yes, bitch. Turn up that organ. Lay down that funky gothic beat. She begins twerking in her revealing spandex bodysuit and stiletto heels. Oh shit, that's Priscilla Bronte. She's the horniest pop star on the charts right now. I'm losing it. Scott, do the talking. Hello! Miss Bronte, ma'am, would you like to become the star of an opera? It's written by the organist whose music you seem to like so much. Hey, hot hunk. Sorry, but I think I'll pass. These organ tracks are turtle bops, but operas are like for wrinkly old people with monocles and shit. Old people with taste, okay? <laughs> not my brand, not my scene. Where's the sass? Where's the ass? Hmm. Fair enough. But if we came to, uh, but what if we came to you with the right opera for you, whatever that means. Mm, sure. Organs are like pianos full of sexy metal dicks. I can make that work. You go back to the tragic composer with the somewhat good news. If you can all come up with an opera good enough for, Pris for Priscilla, she may agree to star in it. The only thing is, what could that be? The opera everyone loves. You know the one, the one that goes, da dum 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 da da dum da da. I don't know that tune. Uh, opera was reborn once already through rock opera. Maybe it's time for the most thrilling twist in the genre yet. ASMR opera. <laughs> this game was made for me! I s I need a minute. How? Jesse. Mr. Cox. How do you have access to my internet browsing history? Sir. <laughs> Sir, I'm feeling very cold out. <clears throat> opera was reborn once already through rock opera. Maybe it's time for the most thrilling twist on the genre yet. ASMR opera. Oh, great idea. ASMR is super trendy right now. I know. <laughs> hmm. I could do an ASMR opera. It's not a genre I know, but I love a challenge. I'll craft a story filled with pathos and tragedy about people wearing leather and carrying whips. Yes! Uh, no. ASMR is like whispering and doing mouth sounds close to a microphone. Sounds that sounds kinky. I'm in. Well, not all ASMR is kinky. It's also used for relaxation, meditation, sometimes uh, spiritualism. Yeah, I get that. But if I'm gonna do ASMR, it's gonna be the raunchy, freaky shit. What licking and deep throating the mic shit? Will that work? <laughs> I don't see why not. You produce your opera, soothing, sloppy ASMR opera. Mouth sounds, mic licking, sensual tapping, drool, starring Priscilla Bronte. 
The audience loves it. Never before have they been simultaneously so relaxed and so aroused. I'm gonna stay on the screen for a second. Oh no, trust me, my mic was too expensive. I'm not gonna shit- <laughs> try and drop this shit in my mouth. <laughs> One Opera Critic reviews it and says- excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. One Opera Critic reviews it and says, No one seems to agree on what divines art, but if an opera can give me such a big heart, or maybe that's true art. Another says, for years I had to pretend to like opera to fit in with my critic friends, not anymore. Finally, someone made an opera that isn't fucking boring. I genuinely enjoy opera. Like, I've been to the opera a couple of times and it's good. It's really good. It's definitely not for everyone, but it's good. Thank you for the stretch check, Sam. And honestly, like, I'm, ha I'm probably gonna wrap up the stream after we finish this, like, run through because this has been so fucking perfect. And it's been like two and a half, almost two and a half hours for one playthrough. So honestly, I'm gonna just leave it at the one for tonight. So just giving you guys a heads up. You gained plus four mind from the relaxation, relaxing ASMR, but you lost four height because even if Priscilla made it sexy, you still propose a genre meant to put people to sleep. Fair enough. As the stroke closes, the organist approaches Priscilla. Mademoiselle, I can't hold it in any longer. I'm deeply in love with you. Your voice is an angelic glimpse into what true beauty is. And each time you open your mouth, I'm transported to what must surely be paradise. Sam, he's, it feels like he stole that line from you. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that this game will be a fan favorite. Oh, absolutely, Talon. Absolutely. Aw, oh, thanks. You're cute in a gloomy, creepy way. You wanted me to swallow your mic? <laughs> and so she swallows his mic. By which I mean his penis, if that was unclear. A true love story. Yeah, we're gonna go. Let's get recharged. Hey. Hey, Himbo. Hey. You doing it? Time doing good? Time to slack. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. How's it going? I was just about to do some exercise. This road trip has put my workout schedule all out of whack. I gotta get some reps in tonight. That makes sense. Maybe I can help you work out somehow? Hey, good idea. You can sit on my back while I do push-ups. Fuck yeah. You sit on Scott and scroll on your phone while he does push-ups. Their repetitive motion is oddly relaxing. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, okay, we're off to knife land because we uh, fulfilled the hype requirement. Oh my fucking god. Yes. The road trip comes to an end. So I need to message um, Autumn Ivy and Ellis, and uh, I need to tell them where our next vacation spot's gonna be. <laughs> hey guys, we're going to Knifeland, USA! <laughs> Fuck yes. Oh, honestly, like, all my spooky friends would like be on board with this. Fuck yes. Knifeland, the land of fun and knives. You ride all the rides, twice. They're awesome and deadly in equal parts. There's the murder mansion with actual murder. There's not one but two free falls. There's the uh, the pitfall of spikes and the guillotine free fall, which lets you keep a severed head as a silly memento. There's also the blender, the pendulum, and a volcano. You're still unsure if the volcano was supposed to be a ride or if it was just a random volcano that happens to be there. So much fun, and you even managed to survive, which is a big plus. Knife land forever. And that wasn't all. Congrats, you reached a destination. 
But there's more to it. Every player gets an individual ending. You can end up being a lame loser, just okay, or the MVP. In multiplayer mode, uh, blah blah blah, multiplayer mode, uh, result and determined uh, based on how much you each contribute to the resources needed to reach a destination. Single player mode is determined by overall resource spread. There's also a date ending which has its own requirements. But ending up as a lame loser will override the date ending, no dates allowed for lame losers. Anyway, let's judge you. Knife land at last. You celebrate by playing some football with Scott. It's an intense match. You're about to score when he tackles you with his huge, muscular body. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. It's okay. I should move. Or oh, you could... perhaps... not? What? Oh boy, you put yourself in a tough predicament. Maybe it's time for you to be brave and tell Scott how you feel about his huge, muscular body. That's really cute, though, the art. Like, the little picture of the two of them. He... <gasps> Dude, oh, so glad you could drop by. Like, you don't need to move. If you don't want to, of course. I like having you on top of me. Sexually speaking. Really? Uh, forget it. I was joking. <laughs> Just joking. Were you? Oh, dang. I would have really liked to have been on top of you, sexually speaking. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? Of course, bro. I've been sending you signals this whole trip. No way, no, it's you that's joking. I miss you too, Vince. We need to have a call sometime. We need to catch up. I'm not. Do you see I drew a smile with syrup on your pancakes when we were having breakfast the other day? It was a, do you want to have sex with me, Sarah smile? I can't with this game. I fucking love this game. Just... The, the purest of himbos. Scarlet, I'm so glad you love this boy. I also winked at you a lot of times. You wink all the time. Yeah, but when I wink at you, it's like in a flirty way. And what about last Thursday? I said, can you imagine us having sex? Wouldn't that be fun or what? I thought it was an idiom for something. It was a legit question, bro. I thought it would be fun. I wanted to check if you thought so too. Sorry, my voice is cracking. I um, I just love these games so much. They're so fun, but so wholesome too. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, I think it would be fun too. Hooray! And so Scott doesn't stop being on top of you. No, you two do some workouts. Oh, well, thanks for the hydrate, Jack. Workout is code for sex. You have sex. It is definitely fun. Okay. So looking at your result results page, it looks like there is an option of three different destinations for each of those stats. So honestly, the replayability of this game is unbelievable. Um, same with all the other um, games in this series, but I was thinking like, oh, I'll just play like, it, it, just play tonight, see how things go, um, and because I didn't know how long like a run would be, but considering a singular run was almost two and a half hours, because keep in mind, I'm also narrating everything, so when you play it on your own, if you choose to like pick this game up, which I highly recommend, um, it will probably be a lot shorter. So I think honestly just having a run per stream is great. So if you guys are good, I might keep playing this for a couple of weeks. Maybe not a super long period of time, but a couple more weeks while it's still like spooky season. Um, we'll just play a little two hours later. Absolutely. So honestly, I just want to like see what else is in this game. Maybe for like two or three more streams we'll see how things go um but yeah honestly i just love this game i like playing on easy mode because then i can just kind of chill out there's a little bit of balancing but i don't feel pressured it's more just i just love the humor in this game so much props to the dev team who made this game all the art in the game itself is amazing honestly 
Beautiful Glitch is such a good group. Like, Jesse Cox, who is like one, pretty much like one of the big minds behind this game, came by the stream earlier because this is the first day it's come out. And so he goes to people streaming it and he comes in and says hi and thanks so much for playing the game, which is fucking awesome. And as a streamer, it means so much to be like, hey, the developers really care about people actually enjoying their game. Like, okay, I'm going on a bit of a rant, but you guys were here early at the start of the stream when Jesse Cox came by. It was fucking awesome. And he sent me free DLC. It was amazing. So when we play this next time, I might have some more characters to choose from to play as. So. There's that. And just like that, the road trip came to an end. It was zero weeks of danger, fun, and utter nonsense. It was everything we could have expected from a trip with Polly and Scott and then some. And not only survived the whole thing, but we, uh, but we conquered and came out different people. It all turned out to be a pilgrimage into self-discovery, a rite of passage, a quest for growth. That is to say, a fucking good road trip. As we were heading back home, I thought about how all of this was just one of the first stops in a much bigger journey that was only just beginning. <gasps> okay, ending animation. I love these. It felt ominous and scary, but it was going to be all right. Because we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. <gasps> oh. The ending credit animations for this game, like all the monster games, are so cute. Hey Milo, I saw you there. I'm gonna try and find you next time. Hopefully. I love the stream safe versions of their ending songs. They're so good! And yes, ton of love to all of the amazing voice actors in this game. Like, I know I was doing voices for uh, a lot of the characters myself, but honestly, the whole team in this game is absolutely fucking fantastic. And, um... Yeah, I love this game so much. I love this series so much. Jesse is fucking fantastic. And um, I still remember when I last, when I streamed uh, Monster Camp for the first time because it was a similar thing. Like, it dropped on a Friday, so I decided I'll stream it on the same Friday that it comes out. And he also came into the chat. And you guys, I remember you saying in chat, like, Got, like Jesse Stephanie's a voice actor, you should totally like have her in one of the games. And um, uh, then Jesse was like, Oh, yeah, absolutely, send me a DM. And uh, I sent him my stuff, and I've kept him updated on like my website and stuff, and like my new voice reel. Like, of course, nothing's been like in confirmed or anything like that, but just the fact that he is a developer went out to like see how. The community was engaging with the game that he was heavily involved in and like was like paying attention to you guys and what you were saying and then was like oh hey you, so you, you want to recommend her like absolutely like come on send stuff my way send like drop in my dms and stuff like there's so much love put in these games and you probably saw i just had the biggest dumbest smile on my face this whole stream and everything is so cute the fact that in one night, in one night, I, in a wonderful flow of serendipitous moments, we got, um, Mothman, an amazing anime convention, um, a wonderful fan of the opera moment with ASMR elements, and an adorable, adorable himbo to romance, like, Fuck yes. Oh. And we're going to be coming back to play this again next week for sure. <laughs> you can now play Prank Master mode. Okay, that's more for like if you're doing uh, multiplayer. But I think with that, I'm going to wrap things up for tonight because this felt 
like a... Um, in a strange way, just through sheer dumb fucking luck. Like a perfect serendipitous series of events for me. They were just wonderful and funny and just all the references were just like... Yes, please. Yes, please, more please. Um, <laughs> but thank you all so much for joining me tonight here at the Blue Rose Respite. If you've been lurking in the shadows and you like what you've seen so far, please consider following. We would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite. You're welcome anytime. Excuse me. Be sure to check out my Twitter for important updates and other fun things. My YouTube for my ASMR tales and other uh, wonderful things. I have a new one coming out tomorrow evening. Um, but as it is a somewhat special one, um, I'm going to probably be doing a premiere for it uh, for tomorrow night. So just keep an eye out for that on my socials because I'll post more information about it tomorrow morning. Um, and my Instagram for lovely pictures. If you're not following my Instagram already, please do so. I would really appreciate the support because um, I'm almost at uh, a thousand followers. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me tonight. A huge thank you uh, to everyone who renewed their subscriptions. You're all amazing. Thank you so much. And let's see who's currently live and we can send them some love. You know what? I want to send you guys over to Jocat this evening because they are wonderful and lovely and deserve a lot of love but also if you haven't already go and uh follow jesse cox on um on twitch his streams are really good really chill he has such great energy um and yeah i highly recommend his streams as well be sure when you do head over and say hi give him plenty of love uh from me and the blue rose respite a lot of the time he streams at like uh, different hours from me, so I'm not able to raid him after my streams. But w if you do check out his stuff, be sure to send him plenty of love from the Blue Rose Respite and from me as well. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight, guys. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And as always, stay working and wonderful. Good night, guys. <laughs>